Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my friends. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot, and hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here, and welcome to my table. So, all of my friends here, you guys, this is an all signs reading. I am going to go through each of the signs individually. I'm going to start here actually from Pisces and go backwards just to switch things up. So, if you're new here, welcome, everybody. It's great to see you. If you are returning, it's good to see you guys again. Thank you so much for your love and support. Um, so we are, today is actually, as I'm recording this, is the Lionsgate portal. And I wanted to do a reading for the Lionsgate portal, but this, this is not uh, it, okay? Kind of, like I'm recording it with these energies with Mercury retrograde as well. But um, as I was getting set for the space here to do this reading today, I was shown an elephant. And the elephant to me is pretty connected to Ganesha, Ganesh. Obliterator of obstacles, okay? Um, so as I was meditating on obliterating obstacles, I feel I, I was also kind of led to just even looking at where we are in general as a human species, okay? Um, it's very polar, it's very charged, it's very divided right now in a lot of ways. And there are also a lot of places where there is connection too. So as I was meditating on this, I was actually shown a symbol that I had channeled for Libra um, several months ago. So I'm going to show you this symbol here. This seems to be kind of the theme of, uh, of what we're doing here, taking, taking something apart in order for it to come back together in a better way, in a stronger way, harder, better, faster, stronger, right? So this symbol here is called Fractualized. I'm going to show the camera. You can pause it if you'd like to draw it out. This one is a little tricky, but it's important to keep the, the symmetry correct. So it is a five-sided shape here and six stars around that, okay? So six divided by five <laughs> in there, or five, six. Um, the instructions for this was actually to, you can either draw with a, like a dry erase marker or on a piece of paper and tape it onto a water glass. But to put this onto a water glass, you can, uh, I mean, you could use other liquids, but I feel like water is going to be the best way to go here. You're programming your water here with the symbol. You don't have to put an intention into it if you don't want to. There's already an intent charged into it. But I would also, as you're drawing that out, put in the intention there of maybe a smooth transition, okay? A, a, a tolerable, tenable transition from what may be needing to disconnect or uncouple in order for something stronger and better to come together. Okay. Okay. All right. Okie doke. Um, so we're going to do any general before. Okay. We'll pull just one of these. All right. We're just going to pull one of these for the collective here. This is the star seed Oracle. Spirit, what do we have here for the collective at this time? What do we have? What's going on? How are you guys doing, by the way? Um, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I do like to chat as I can. Um, I do have personal readings open and available. If you guys are interested, you can check out the description of this video. There's a link to my website. And huge shout out to my channel members too. If you guys are interested in becoming a channel member yourself, I do have a link in the description of the video. <laughs> And then there's also a join button next to the subscribe under the video. You can hit subscribe if you haven't already. Water your garden. Yes, okay, of course. Nourishment, body care, tenderness, and rest. So I feel like at this time, I mean, always, it's important to water our garden. This is, this is um, symbolizing a component of the divine feminine where we are taking time to receive. To receive in a way that is nourishing to us. I feel like especially going through the Lionsgate portal with Mercury going retrograde, so many things, like I said, being polar and in, in our lives these days, all the more reason why I'm getting like to drink water. Was that on there? Yeah, what, drinking water isn't on here, but nourishment, body care. I think it's because she's in the water. Drinking water right now, and I love that Fractualized was brought up here to, to give to you guys as well. So program that water and drink that water, right? Make sure you're getting your electrolytes too so that you are staying actually hydrated. I feel like... Um, that's interesting. 
what I'm seeing is, um, hmm, maybe that's the, why the fractalize is coming through. So, um, your cells, all right? The reason I was saying, like, make sure you have your electrolytes too. It's really important to have the right balance of, well, sodium, magnesium, and, and potassium in our system because of the way that a cell is set up, sodium being higher on the outside of the cell, potassium being higher on the inside, magnesium also helps facilitate movement of things in, in and out of the cell membrane. If those are off, then water can't move in and out of the cell, wastes can't move in and out of the cell, things start to become slower, things start to become unhealthy, sick. Um, it feels like there is, with this portal especially, there is um, an upgrade if you want to look at it that way, initiation, something major going on as far as a change goes, in order for this to happen, we need, well, one several vital nutrients, right? Water and salt, okay? Think about it. <laughs> um, I like to, um, like whether it's Himalayan pink salt's great, Celtic sea salt has a bit more mineral, have more of the minerals in there. But um, if you take just like a, a tiny bit of that salt before you drink the water, that helps make sure that you have the balance that you need in order to actually assimilate that water. Because otherwise you're just peeing it out all day, okay? Most of the time, like we do absorb a little bit of it, but salt is something that's very important as well. Okay, let's keep going you guys. Um, I am gonna start with Pisces, like I said. So we'll move right on into Pisces. I'm gonna clear the space here. Well, I'm going to write down my, my timing first. Hold on one sec. Okay. Hello, Pisces. Hmm. Interesting. I'm being shown um, the symbol for, for Libra, which is, like I said, this is where this, this symbol came from, was a Libra reading. Feel like this might be especially important for you guys right now too. Water, that water element. Okay, Spirit, which deck do you want to use here? Phantasma, one of my favorites. All right, what do we have here for Pisces? Actually, you're right, I did want to start there. I'm gonna do an animal card and I just introduced these Mudra cards here too, to the channel. I've had them for a minute, but um, start giving this information out to you guys as well. So what mudra do we have for Pisces, please, spirit? Mudra is a hand symbol or gesture that directs and blocks certain energies in order to um, create a desired effect, okay? Wait, which one did you want here? The middle, okay. So, you guys got stop. Stop, stay a while and enjoy. Cool down mudra. So I'm going to read the back of this here. Hyperactivity is not very enjoyable. It saps one's energy, energy and weakens the immune system. One feels like an overstretched piece of elastic, and strangely enough, one cannot even stand the piece which one is trying to find. Perform the cool down mudra as often as you can, and be careful to be aware of your breathing. Imagine the Arctic summer, icebergs sparkle in the sun, the sea is calm and deep blue. You share your world with the penguins, sea lions, polar bears, and so forth, in calm and harmonious company, and let yourself be bewitched by the sun, the ice, and the sea. With each breath which I take, I let myself be carried deeper and deeper into calmness and empty space, from which I draw new strength and abundance. Yay! And that's number 54, 9. So, um... Thumb and pinky here. Just gonna go in front of each other so you can just hold this out here while you're meditating, all right? All right, all right, so let's pull a Animal Spirit Oracle card for you guys as well. What do we have for Pisces, please, Spirit? Ooh, my nose just got super itchy. Well, hey, 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 there's the elephant. <laughs> That's exactly what I saw. Whole pile fell out here. Um, that wasn't it, just showing me that. Well, it seems like, yeah, there is some sort of, mm, maybe your obstacle right now is like that Mudra's talking about, being able to enjoy the peace that you're creating in your life right now. Maybe you are creating peace, but you're not taking advantage of the peace or it feels like there's something that is getting in the way of that. Interesting, frog. So, um, 
back on the topic of water here, um, it seems that, yeah, I would say either up your water intake, your electrolytes as well, make sure that's balanced. This could also be symbolizing there's a need to get back into water space. So the frog is a, an energy, an entity, <laughs> is a creature here that is both of the land and the water. They are first born in the water, they move to the land, they always go back to the water though. This is an encouragement to uh, take a bath. <laughs> you may need to go to a body of water, take a bath, create some sort of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Mercury retrograde, totally. So much mercury in my chart, you guys. Um, a system. Uh, what? I'm, I'm totally missing that word right now. Ritual. Okay. Yeah. Gosh. Anyway, ritual, creating a ritual with water, whether that's with a bath, allowing things to be cleansed off of you, recharged, um, the drinking of the water, like I said, and you don't have to just use that symbol. You can program your water with anything, with any intentions. You can create your own symbols even if you wanted to. Okay. Okay. So spirit, what do we have here for Pisces at this time? My Pisces friends, I wanted to get you guys in the beginning here because you're always at the end and I feel like um, I always have less energy towards the end too. So fresh out the gate here. What do we have for Pisces? Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. And feel free to check out any of my other readings, you guys. Like I said, all messages are timeless. Strength here at the bottom. This is also uh, Leo's card, strength. So finding strength, inner strength, a quiet strength, being calm and compassionate and kind towards yourself as you're making changes and that sort of thing rather than with a firm hand or an unwavering hand, okay? Um, this is Leo's card, like I said. So it seems like, well, I am recording here on Leo's uh, or the Leo Gabe. Um, maybe you did end up doing some sort of ritual here at Lionsgate. Um, but I feel like mostly you may have Leo in your chart as well. Um, mostly though, I feel like this is bringing up the subject that there's going to need to be some digging deep here for some additional strength. Okay. All right, let's get into it. So, Ten of Pentacles, I like that. Ace of Cups, Two of Cups, Five of Swords, and then the Jinn. Okay. So, I'll explain the positions on these as I go, too. So, Ten of Pentacles here to start. This is generally what we're talking about. This is your legacy, building and leaving a legacy. It is um, everything that you could want. Ultimate material and spiritual abundance. I do feel like, like with the tigers on here... Um, a tiger changing its stripes is coming through. So, yeah, it feels like there is something that you guys are working, have been working to change, but this feels, maybe there was a ritual or something that was going on here at Lionsgate where you put that additional effort into making this change. Or you're in a place where you're like, I a, a tiger can't change its stripes, right? Um, it can get tattoos, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, no, a tiger can't change the color of its skin necessarily, but that doesn't mean that an old dog can't learn new tricks, right? Um, there is there is a, a message coming through regarding this process of like going back to the water and stop again, coming through. Something, and I feel like it's you guys, to be honest. I feel like it might be ego. It might be just a lack of paying attention to this being something you're going through getting in your own way to enjoy whatever piece it is that you are building in your life. I know there are many, many things out here these days that can and do take our peace away, but we also have to realize that we play a part in what energy we do or don't give away, okay? So um, with this coming through, I feel like you guys are on the right track, whatever it is that you're, you're working to change. But there's a recommendation to step away from what you may think is impossible 
like that, a tiger changing its stripes. Um, move more into a state of curiosity and see what's possible. Don't let somebody else dictate to you what is or isn't possible when it comes to your own life and what you're creating, okay? Your legacy. So, um, this is interesting. Um, with, I don't want to put that. You're being asked to step away from this as a focus. Move the spotlight from this area for right now. It's not that it's not important, but right this second, there's another step that needs to be taken first. So, Ace of Cups. This is uh, a new relationship, the starting of a new relationship, a new emotional opportunity of some sort. I feel um, some of you may be working to create another relationship in your life at this time or bring new relationships in. Um, I do want to pull another card on that, but moving into like what your focus is, you have two of cups. So I find this really interesting. This is connection. Could also symbolize like a union, things coming together, people meeting. So having having the start of this new relationship coming through as an avoid right now, um, it makes me feel like there's something you're being asked to work on that you currently have. And this may not be for everybody, but and it doesn't have to be like just romantic, could be friendship, something like that. Something about like. Um, having gratitude for what it is that you do have. Mm, oh, okay. Okay, no, that makes sense. Um, if it is that you are looking for a new relationship here, new love, you're being asked to focus on sharing more love. <laughs> Put more energy out there, the energy that you're looking to bring back into yourself. This isn't saying that, you know, you won't have that new relationship, but... You're being asked to, um, how's that go? You can't pull money out of a bank account until you deposit money, right? <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm getting here. You're being asked to deposit some energy so that you can get that back in return. Cool. Um, yeah, keep moving forward. Five of Swords here is where this goes, where it leads, or what it's good for. So... I am, I am feeling like argumentative, okay, uh, fighting verbally in this way. I feel like the reason, the reason why you're being asked to either focus on what it is that you have currently or to put more of that energy out there that you want to receive, more love, like um, loving on your neighbor, loving on yourself more, that came through with Water Your Garden for everyone, uh, putting more love out there with a pet, with your community, the purpose of this, the Five of Swords, is a combination of the Two and the Three of Swords. Two of Swords, being at a crossroads, need to make a decision. Three of Swords is pain, loss, heartbreak. So I feel like um, what Spirit is asking you to do right now, or giving you this, this recommendation, is before moving into trying to create whatever this new beautiful opportunity is, um, before you get to that point, there is something where there's already a connection or pain that needs to be addressed. There's some healing that needs to happen here with that Three of Swords. Taking those swords out of our heart is what we need to do, okay? If this is something that you need professional help with, absolutely go get professional help. Uh, many books that are out there as well. Even just meditating and journaling, starting to identify maybe what kind of cycles and processes you have going on that are just beneath the surface. Because you have, as a recommendation, advice, you have the djinn. Uh, the genie. The devil. The devil. And this is your shadow. These are the things that keep us chained to this physical realm. And with that five of swords coming through here, bet this chain right now is this heartbreak. Somewhere where someone has broken your heart. Maybe you broke your own heart. Whatever this is, though, it feels like you are constantly turned away from this like facing this as your access into the water again where you need this healing facing this is your ability to enjoy the peace that you've been building in your life so you're being advised to face your shadow not to dive into it that isn't the water <laughs> it's just the um the entry point here okay there's something coming up in your shadow revol revolving around heartbreak that's requesting to be seen right now. 
and I feel like back to the tiger with the stripes, the story that needs to change there is whatever story came from that. Okay. I always get hurt. This always happens to me. Men or women are always this way, et cetera, et cetera. This is an opportunity for you guys to, uh, to change that, change your fate. Okay. All right, Pisces. I hope this was helpful. I love you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get moved into Aquarius. Aquarius, Aquarius. All right. Is that here? Okay. I'm going to change the time there. Okay, Aquarius. Hello, hello. So let me clear the space here real quick. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what's coming through is from the, from the fridge to the freezer. What does that mean, Spirit? I mean, right away, I think about the heart, like the heart growing colder. Um, this feels like Mm, this could be a choice to yourself or it could be like a relationship outside of you. Somebody's made this decision to to put <laughs> put you in the freezer. Um, maybe you've been put in the freezer, the freezer spell, or maybe you've been using a freezer spell. Um, this seems like there's an encouragement, though, to just be aware. If, if you're feeling frigid, <laughs> um, if everything is feeling cold, not literally uh, physically, but like, the perception of coldness, okay? Um, to consider where maybe you're operating from, from a heart space. Are you closed off? Is there a need to open yourself up a little bit more to yourself or others, okay? All right, let's pull a Mudra card for you for Aquarius, please, spirit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Feeling fumbly. Um, Aquarius, Aquarius, Aquarius. And mudras are hand symbols or signs that direct energy flow through our hands. What do we have for Aquarius, please, Spirit? Longing. Interesting. Um, so I'm going to show this to you and read the back. Longing. Nirvan Mudra. The spiral mudra strengthens the vegetative nervous system and activates the production of feel-good hormones. The wrists are crossed over and round each other. The little finger, ring finger, and middle fingers are interlocked. See yourself sitting on a spiral which extends deep into the ground below you and up and up into the infinity of the sky. If you let yourself slide down it, life seems to be without sense or meaning. So instead you move up the spiral, knowing that there are other worlds, powers, and secrets beyond that which we can see. You yield up your longing and yourself to these higher powers and sing. Beyond the beyond, the beyond, beyond the furthest limits, I find light and bliss. Ooh, I love that. So, um, let me see here, are they? It's kind of a tricky one. But pointer fingers and twisted like this. I'm sure I look pretty awesome. <laughs> In meditation, okay? All right, animal spirit message for Aquarius, please. What does Aquarius need to know at this time? The Nightingale. <laughs> okay, music. I love, um, and sing was a part of this. Nightingale is an energy of, like, there's music, singing. Nightingales have a beautiful song that they sing. This is about connecting the heart to the voice. So thank you, Spirit. I feel like we're right on, right on point here from the fridge to the freezer there. It feels like there's something intentionally, you know, it may not have been consciously, but unconsciously, there was intention in freezing up your heart space. And this is also making it difficult for um, your words to have any value or weight. Because words in and of themselves, I mean, they're, they do have a meaning and there's energy behind them. But when we connect it to like a speak from our heart, that's what really gives our words power. Okay. 
because there's a piece of you that you're putting into what it is that you're putting out here as well. Um, music could be something that is healing for you at this time too. Maybe you are a singer, um, if that's the case, or even if you're not, we're all singers, okay? Singing is definitely one of those things that we should all just like dancing participate in, no matter what somebody thinks about it. It's such a beautiful way to move energy, all right? Uh, which deck are we doing here for Aquarius? Murder of Crows, okay. Okay, I haven't had this one out for a second. So, Spirit, what do we have here for Aquarius, please? Please, child. <laughs> okay. Four of Cups here at the split. I do, I am just getting this feeling of rigidity. There is something that you are not being flexible about. And, and it has to do with your heart space here. Maybe you have been hurt in the past. Whatever has happened though, um, keeping that space closed off really is only hurting you. So don't do that anymore. <laughs> Stop it, Aquarius. What do we have here for Aquarius? I know it's you know easier said than done, but it's also something that you can approach doing. Nine of Cups. So um, wish fulfilled here. This is your personal satisfaction. This is receiving something, knowing you're going to receive it. So I get, you know, kind of with manifestation, we're experiencing something before we experience it. The thoughts, the emotions, the gratitude. Um, there is something about be it spoken. There's something that you're not even, mm, interesting, let it part your lips. Okay, <laughs> okay. There's something that you're not even vocalizing that... Um, you want or need. Ew, I've got all the chills on that. Interesting. Okay, let's get into this. Let's see. The devil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pisces had the devil come through too. The devil, the world, three of swords. My goodness, you guys. Two of wands and then ten of swords. Holy shit. Okay. <clears throat> um, so this feels to me, and I'll go through the positions as I come through the reading. This feels to me like, like I was saying, there's something that needs to be spoken. Something from the past, a relationship you've gone through where there was heartbreak somewhere currently. Maybe you're in a relationship that's not working. Um, whether that's with like your job, friends, romantic, family, yourself. Um, something needs to be spoken about though. And I feel like, so the devil coming through here, the devil, this is your shadow. This is those things that, uh, keep us chained here to this physical realm, an abuse of power. I feel like you guys, mm, I do feel like you've been working to separate yourself from the devil here completely. Like... Um, interesting. Okay. Drinking is something that it comes through a lot because I think it's just one of the more common ones that, you know, people can imbibe in, but it could be anything. Drug, sex, alcohol, right? Rock and roll. <laughs> anything that keeps us chained, anything that starts to get in the way of our happiness or our ability to experience life in a healthy way. Uh, maybe you quit drinking, right? Or, or whatever else, but there's this energy that's still like, it's like you're, you're trying to cut off your shadow. Either trying to cut that part of your life out or um, you're trying to make it look a certain way, maybe to others, but particularly to yourself. Interesting. So maybe, okay, that's the thing that's coming up for me as far as needing to be spoken. There's something you need to be honest with about yourself. The shadow doesn't ever disappear. We can't cut the shadow off. As long as we're here in this realm, we are both light and shadow. Um, if you're cutting off your access to the shadow, you're cutting off your access to the light too. It's like you're thrusting yourself into this void space. You're spiraling down that spiral rather than up. This isn't a matter of willpower, okay? It's a matter of honesty for, towards yourself. Interesting. Okay, let's get... I do want... Keep going. Okay. 
we'll get some clarification. So what you're being asked to move the spotlight away from right now, it's not that this isn't important, but right this second there is another focus, and we'll get to that. The world. So this is a major ending, something coming to a close. Connected to what I was talking about here with the devil, it, it feels like, like I said, you're trying to cut off your shadow. The thing about this individual, sorcerer, sorceress, sorcerer them, <laughs> They have gotten through every archetype of the major arcana. They've gotten to this portal um, to cross through. We are in the Lionsgate portal today too. The reason this individual has the power, every power from every major arcana up to this point is because they are accepting of both their light and their dark. Both wands here, one of the light, one of the dark. Um, one is from the magician and one is one of their own creation. So this individual can't operate in this space, though, unless they're fully accepting of themselves. They're fully open and honest with themselves. This isn't like maybe there's somebody that you need to be honest to about something, but this is feeling more so yourself. Maybe the portion of honesty that you're needing right now is... Um, like I'm thinking about maybe going back to this behavior or um, there's a whole concept of like a dry drunk, okay? <laughs> um, when we're trying to quit something, a substance or, or a behavior, rebounding to that is a part of that process. Whether we do that by participating in that behavior or substance again or we're just doing it mentally, that is a part of recovery. And it feels like, it's almost like when that portion of that healing comes up, you're shutting that down. Like, nope, that's not, I'm totally ignoring that. That's not happening. And that's not making anything go away. It's making it bigger, in fact. So you're being asked to be honest about that. Be honest about your own humanness. This allows you passage through. This allows you to move up the spiral rather than continuing to stay in this space that that life is not growing there is no light or dark it's the void right it's a liminal space maybe you're experiencing like you're you're trying really hard to grow uh to grow in business friendships whatever and you're just not experiencing that growth you're feeling frozen or stuck take a look at this become curious about where where might i be trying to disillusion myself with the devil into um, ignoring something that is important to see in my process of being healthy, whatever that means, okay? Whatever it is that you're going through. Okay, so your focus, what you are being asked to focus on, you do want one more card on the, on the world, please, Spirit. <laughs> so two actually came out here, that's funny. The Magician, which I was just saying, the world here, or this person has one of the wands from the magician. The magician and the seven of pentacles came out. Five of pentacles, excuse me. Um, so you're being asked to turn away from like, so five, okay, I'll explain it, I'll slow down, slow it down. Five of pentacles is like being out in the cold um, from the fridge to the freezer. So wherever you're experiencing this coldness, the reminder here with the five of pentacles is you, you are the captain of your sea. You can move yourself into any room that you want at any time. It may appear as if somebody's put you in a room and you're sequestered there, but you have the key. The magician reminds you of that too. You have the ability to create anything that you want to create. So you're being asked to focus on that. Where do you want to, to move yourself from, okay? Where do you want to move to? Instead of focusing on something just being over. I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a drinker anymore. I don't want to, you know... Uh, Smoke weed anymore. I don't want to be a, a cigarette smoker, whatever. It's There's more than just cutting all of that off when you're making that kind of change. There's a need to go through some radical honesty about who, what, where, where, why, and how, okay? Why were you using this situation, substance, person, whatever, in the first place? What were you trying to numb out? Get clear about that, okay? You You have the strength to do that. So, Three of Swords, this is your focus, what you're being asked to focus on. Heartbreak, loss, pain, stormy emotions. So again, brought back here, when those, whatever emotions are coming up that you're trying to push away, stop doing that. 
very clearly you're being asked to focus on this. The reason why it's coming up is because there's a need to heal it. And part of this healing or big part of this healing is being honest about something. Maybe there is something you need to say to somebody else. That's okay. Like I said, it just feels like there's more something that needs to be said to you. What is the message beyond anger? Do you know? Do you know what message is coming through underneath all of that? If you don't, you're being asked to focus on this. Otherwise, this cycle just continues. And, you know, if you don't know why you're taking a step or not taking a step, then um, it's difficult to know when to take a step or not to take a step. So what this is good for, where this leads, you have two of wands. This is you making the decision to expand. This is your preliminary preparatory planning. Making the decision to move from where you are comfortable to where you are uncomfortable for the sake of growth. It could be travel for some of you. Um, the world here does symbolize travel. So being in the place where you're being asked not to focus on that right now, maybe there is something that... Um, yeah, I don't feel like it's physical travel. It could be for some of you. If that's the case, you're being asked to focus on um, your attitude towards something first before making this plan to travel. Interesting. But for most of you, this is uh, making a change, making a, a change in direction, you know, something like that. Making the decision to expand. So um, your advice <laughs> in this entire situation right now, you have the Ten of Swords. So this is not the best card. It's not. <laughs> this is ultimate pain and loss. Betrayal. Rock bottom. Rock bottom. <laughs> um, the only advice with the Ten of Swords here is get the hell out of there. There's nothing here but pain. And I feel like this is, um, you may not be intentionally working to stay in this space, but with everything else that we're talking about, it's that process of ignoring a message that's, that's coming up to be seen by you that may be keeping you in this place of the Ten of Swords, that pain. It is serving you in some way to stay in that place. I wouldn't say in a positive way, but uh, yeah, the recommendation here is it's time to go. There's nothing left here. It's, it's time to go. And part of going in this situation is speaking that, speaking whatever's coming up for you. Do some mirror work that's coming through. Speak to yourself in the mirror. Make eye contact with yourself and ask yourself questions about what in the hell's going on. Okay? All right. Aquarius, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here. I'm going to move on into Capricorn, my Capricorn friends. Let me clear the space here. All right. Okay, Capricorn. Hello, hello. I'm going to cleanse the space here real quick. Hmm. Um, so I'm being, hmm, I'm being shown a, a dove, a morning dove. There may be, hmm, I'm getting kind of like, you're waiting for a message on something. Okay. Okay, yeah, we'll revisit it. Okay, we'll keep moving forward here. So I'm gonna start with the Mudra card here for you guys for Capricorn spirit. What do we what do we have for Capricorn? What do they need at this time? Mudras are hand symbols or gestures that move and block certain energies through our hands to produce a desired effect. Reason, interesting. Interesting. Reason, think it over. So I'm going to show this to you and read on the back. The, uh, the mudra for musing. Calm down and find a place where you can think over a problem in peace and quiet. Look at it from one point of view and then another. Try to get an overview and then consider each detail one by one. Find the right proportion so that everybody and everything has its due. That is the way to produce dependable results. Picture yourself on top of a mountain. Your gaze encompasses your whole life, your doings and your dealings with other people. Or perhaps the scope is smaller concentrated upon a particular issue which is bothering or concerning you. 
From this vantage point, you can simply see further and more clearly, and you greatly increase the chances of finding the best solution. Constructive and positive thoughts are the seed, are the seed corn of a life of fulfillment and joy. So, um, hooking like this, okay, you can hold this in in meditation to help to help you mull something over. Um, yeah, that message. Let's see, what do you have here? Spirit animal wise for Capricorn, please spirit. What messages? What message are they waiting for? Not yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> spirit animal energy for Capricorn, please. <laughs> Which one of these things just doesn't belong here? <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, so two actually came out here. Dragonfly and deer. So with messages, dragonfly is always a form of a messenger for me too. It um, like on the wings of a dragonfly, the lore of it is to make a wish when you see a dragonfly, you can be sure there's an angel riding on its wings. So I do get this feeling of or message of support. With the deer coming through here too, this is divine feminine energy. This is the energy of, um, of new creation, new birth protecting that which is being created. Maybe that's the message you've been looking for. Is something worth it? Mm. So you've got the mulling it over there too. Well, if that's the case, Capricorn, I would say, yes, what it is you are working on does have merit or is worth it. There's something about the dragonfly in the book I'm being called to. Uno momento, por favor. Maybe. Ladera is standing out here um, to getting into nature and connecting with children is something that could be helpful for you at this time too. I feel like there is a need to kind of get out of your head or to move something from your head back into the earth, mother earth too with the deer. So the dragonfly, master of light, illusion in the mind. <laughs> okay, totally. There's something definitely rolling around up here that is feeling stuck. Um, so imbalance sees clearly joyful and magical. Out of balance, can't concentrate, busy mind. To bring into balance, focus on the breath. Yes, that's what it was. So meditation is definitely coming through strongly here for you guys. Um, I would absolutely use this mudra too while you're in meditation to help to help you figure something out. Giving yourself grace right now, or maybe giving somebody else grace, or maybe a little bit of both. Okay, which deck are we using for Capricorn? Lights ears, yeah. Okay. Um, so what do we have here for Capricorn? Please spirit, what messages do we have for Capricorn? At this time. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, my cappy friends? Um, I know it's been a second since you guys, I, I do monthly readings for the signs and I'm working to do a few more of these, all signs for everybody. But yeah, what's going on? What's going on, Capricorn? Hit me up, we'll chat. <laughs> the devil, <laughs> the devil. So this is your card, okay? Um, I am getting, that's interesting. So I'm recording this on 8.8 right now, Lionsgate Portal. Um, great time for hyper jumping to realities that we want. Um, Capricorn, the devil, ruled by Saturn here. I'm getting this message of like karma coming through, a lesson in, in karma, but this isn't really like, Okay, how do you want me to say that? Like, there's nothing that's dishing this out to you. Um, the lesson in karma right now is actually you learning about um, self-impact, okay? How you may be speaking something into an experience. Maybe there's something that has happened in your past where you're not super proud of it, you know? 
um, and you are beating yourself up because of that and maybe projecting into this experience like, I know my karma's coming, I know my karma's coming. Do you get what I'm saying? If that's you, let it go, my friend. <laughs> Gotta let it go, okay? It's really important to live in the present moment and that kind of fixation is going to, uh, number one, absolutely bring those things that we're afraid of closer to us. But it's also destroying your peace in the moment, okay? All right, Nine of Pentacles, Four of Wands, Knight of Cups, King of Pentacles, and the Emperor. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so with Nine of Pentacles here, this is your independence. One of the components of Nine of Pentacles is clear, calm, collected thought. So that is a big message that's coming through. I'd say you guys are struggling with some anxiety. There is something circular to your process of thought right now. I do feel like something, you know, something is triggering that fear, but I'm definitely getting that this is a fear. And there is a choice. There's a choice here to participate, to be afraid or not, okay? Nice slow breath. I think it's important to question ourselves whether or not we are participating in that kind of behavior. And I think if your first reaction here is to shut down what I'm saying, I highly encourage you especially to take a second look. If there's something activated or triggered inside of us as we're watching something, that's because there's something that is being activated inside of us. There's truth to it. It's conflicting with what our, our worldview is or our beliefs are. And it's more than okay, it's encouraged, it's healthy, it's emotionally intellectual to question those things. You may still come back to the same realization, but going through that process of questioning it is only serving you, okay? Your soul growth and development. Well, and it serves the rest of us too. Wouldn't it be nice to have a group of people <laughs> we're all living with that are emotionally intelligent? Mm-hmm, yeah, that would be, that would be great, I think. So I feel like there is a lot more clarity, comfort, and peace that's available when you guys take the time to question your process of thought, okay? To breathe. How are you contributing maybe to that stress? Okay? Four of Wands here, what you're being asked to put on the back burner for a second here. It's important, but not right this second. So this is uh, like a crossing of a threshold. I feel like there's something you guys have been working towards as far as accomplishing uh, maybe it's something at work. Maybe it's uh, could symbolize marriage here. Maybe it is moving a relationship to the next level, uh, moving in together, getting married, having children, maybe getting a divorce too. But this is also celebrating with those that you feel connected to. So I feel like there is a reason to celebrate. There is something being crossed or accomplished, but right this second, this is not the main focus, okay? you're being asked to focus on the Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups here, um, this is romance. It is um, getting your cup filled, okay? It could be an offer for love. Uh, it's a romantic person. It's an emotionally intelligent person here too. It's not the king or queen of cups, okay? Being the masters of those areas, but definitely willing to put love into motion. So this card in particular reminds me of like dating, dating oneself, taking yourself out on a picnic here, getting some flowers, maybe get yourself a fresh haircut, some new shoes, whatever, a cheval, a new horse. <laughs> um, so what you're being asked to focus on here, if this is marriage, maybe for you guys to not focus on the marriage portion yet <laughs> to focus on the dating first. Okay. Are you still dating a partner? Are you still flirting with your partner if this is you in a romantic situation? Um, for everyone else, though, too, the message here I'm getting is dating yourself. Are you loving yourself the way that you want other people to love you? If you're not, why? Why, Capricorn? You can buy yourself flowers. Go do it. Okay? Date yourself. And I know that may sound silly, but it's not. Treat yourself the way that you want others to treat you too, and vice versa, obviously. 
put this energy out there so that that energy comes back to you as well, especially if you're looking for a relationship, okay? Um, for some of you, I do feel this connection to uh, like that circular thinking, maybe a relationship ended and um, you are just like going over and over and over this whole thing. I feel like you may be taking, if this is you, you may be taking a bit more ownership than you need to in the situation. Especially like if we are the ones who are broken up with, it's not always true, but we tend to like glamorize this other person. We put them on a pedestal. We may start blaming ourselves for everything that went wrong or the reason why it ended. Please know that this is just the ego. Okay, this is the devil that is trying to keep you, it's the brain trying to keep you in a situation where it's getting that hit of chemicals that it was getting in that situation of the relationship. Emotional intelligence is going to allow you to see what's happening, okay? It's not saying that all the thoughts are gonna stop like that because you're aware of it, but it makes it a lot easier for you to, uh, to not put so much weight on yourself, to not be so hurtful or unkind towards yourself, okay? Well, if I did this, you know, this wouldn't have ended. And it's okay in grief too to barter. That's a that's a step. But uh, yeah, I feel like that's for someone in particular. Um, getting back to dating yourself is something that's very important right now. So where this leads, uh, King of Pentacles. And I do feel there is like love. There's a relationship component to this reading for you guys. And with that being said, the reason why you're being asked to step away from this, like crossing the threshold, the threshold that I'm getting from that or milestone is maybe starting a new relationship or taking something to another level, marriage, you know, moving in, whatever, um, before you are aware why you're doing it. Are you in a place where you are making those decisions because maybe you feel like something is separating or is falling apart? Like you're trying to have a kid to solve your relationship problems, you know what I mean? Which works 0% of the time, right? Um, bringing this focus back to yourself, whether you're in a relationship or not, or looking, if you are looking, where this leads, what it's good for, this leads you to your king of pentacles. This is somebody who is willing to put the work in. This can also be you. This is you moving from the knight of cups here to the king of pentacles. Somebody who's willing to put in the work that's needed for whatever, whether that's you at work, in a relationship, a home, a play. This is you willing to put effort into watering your garden here, like I said in the general, taking care of yourself. This is also abundance, okay? There could be money coming for some of you. Um, I don't feel like this is like totally out of nowhere. This is something that you would be aware of coming forward, an investment of some sort. This makes you a better partner and friend, okay? Love it. So your advice for the situation, you have the emperor. This is your power, control. Um, the emperor knows in order to rule in a healthy way, they must also be connected to the empress, the divine feminine. There must be a healthy balance between the two energies for both of them to be healthy. So the advice for you guys at this time, back to water your garden, divine feminine energy, is needing to be in balance here in order for you to come back into a place of power and control of presence to be present you're being asked to be present here too as the divine masculine so um journaling like i was saying meditating taking baths getting curious about these emotions that are coming up or thoughts those are divine feminine activities that are helping to balance the energies of the divine masculine this is how you you gain power back or gain control the control that you're looking for here, okay? Breaking free from uh, that control, right? Yes. All right, um, let's close with the Urban Crow card here. Last piece here for uh, Capricorn Spirit. I told myself I keep these to like 10 minutes a piece, but that's not how it's going. <laughs> Okay, influence. This has been something that's come through for, well, came through for Aquarius as well. Influence. Um, this card is about substances, activities, people, relationships that we participate in that are there to help us numb, to numb us out. Filling that hole, so to speak. 
so with the doubt that's the devil energy here too like i was saying um i was saying that to aquarius the devil addictions the chains that we have connected to this realm drinking drugs sex gambling food tv electronics toxic relationships right um you're being encouraged to look at this behavior here, okay, you guys? This may be the lesson in karma. Again, I don't feel like it's karma. Like, I mean, karma is cause and effect. So there is cause and effect to it. If you're thinking something, there is an effect. Yeah, it's coming forward. But what I'm getting is like, like the influence, your, your influence on something too. Maybe you're, you're punishing yourself by doing something you don't even want to do anymore because you're thinking somewhere in the subconscious, like this is what I deserve or this is what I need, right? Okay, that would be an abuse of power towards yourself. So don't do that, okay? All right, <laughs> 55, 55 on the timer. Major change for you guys. Now's the time, now's the time. All right, so I'm gonna move into Sagittarius. Y'all, thanks for coming. Capricorn, I hope you guys have a beautiful week, month, however long it is until I see you guys again. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Okay. Sagittarius, welcome, welcome. Let me clear the space. Hmm. a lot of a lot of okay let me see <laughs> so i was just shown it's kind of a little backward z i guess but in each corner there's uh so the bottom has a right side up triangle the top has an upside down inverted triangle uh masculine feminine giving receiving fire water symbols um what was also coming through was it is it is both further than you think and it is not as far as you think. Okay. So that could be that could be different for everybody, or there's there are components to the same thing that you're going through right now where you need to realize that something is maybe further than you think it is and something is actually closer than you think it is. Okay. Check it out. Let's see what's going on here. For Sagittarius, please, Spirit. I'll start with a Mudra card for you. What do we have for Sagittarius? And how are you, Saggy? It's been a minute. I missed you guys. I'm gonna do a few more of these um, all signs readings moving forward, so no worries. Eternal change, it will pass. Interesting. The Mudra of the Wheel of Life. So the I don't have my glasses on here. The Dharma Chakra. The Dharma Chakra Mudra has a calming, soothing effect on all levels and imparts equanimity. Hold your hands in front of your chest with the right palm facing outwards. The right hand is a little higher than the left hand, which faces inwards. There is a time for rain and storm, which then passes, and it is just the same with suffering and pain. It is a help if we, if we simply try to accept pain and in spite of everything to make the best of the here and now. I speak from experience. See yourself next to the wheel of time. Every time you breathe out, blow gently against the wheel to make it turn, bringing you a new, interesting, and joyful period of time. I focus my five senses on everything, which is beautiful and gives me pleasure. Love it. Um, so 64 is this card that comes to a 10 or a 1. Um, I just find that interesting with like further and closer than you think. So what that says to me is like 10 being the end, back to one being the beginning. Um, like the ending may be uh, both further or closer than you realize. The beginning is also further or closer than you realize. Mmm, depending on where you are here on the wheel. Okay. This idea of coming into the present moment. Ah, okay. So depending on where you are, <laughs> If you're trying to live in the past or live in the future here is taking you away from the present moment. That is where it is both. It is further away than you think outside of the present moment. It is closer than you realize being in the present moment. Okay. You got this, you guys. You can do it. 
All right. Oh, did I put? I didn't mean to put that back. The water your water your garden here. I don't know why I took that away for your guys's. <laughs> no rest for you. <laughs> no rest for the wicked, right, Sagittarius? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, what animal spirit messages do we have here for Sagittarius? Please spit it. What's going on for Sagittarius? The lion. Lion, lion. Maybe you're lion. This is the, um, well, we are in the Lionsgate portal today is when I'm filming this. So this could be pointing to, you know, hey, pay attention. There are, like, when it comes to astrological events, there is an importance on the day. Yes, you know, things, things that are happening, but it is also like a window, okay? There are opportunities of time to focus our intention. And with this coming through, I feel like you guys are being encouraged. Hey, yeah, you know, for this period of time, I will get this uploaded tonight. So the 8th, depending on where you guys live. Uh, even no matter when you see this, okay. You're being encouraged to maybe pay attention to the rituals and, and things that you did do on Lionsgate. Or you're being asked to pay attention to doing that next time. The moon cycles, making rituals for yourself. The lion knows when to conserve energy and when to initiate energy. They're either hunting or they're lounging about, okay? So the lion is about conservation of energy. With water your garden needing to pull that back out, maybe you guys are pushing yourself a bit hard right now. There is a need to nourish your body, your emotional self, your soul, your mind. It feels like there's something that is a little bit out of balance, especially with the wheel there, eternal change and the lion. It's like you may be, mm, you may be finding yourself in this place where you're constantly initiating energy. And I feel like this is because of, mm, pain is what's coming up. Like there's something that you may be working to avoid. And because of that, you're constantly in this state of not, never being able to rest. Like, um, what is that? The Sunday scaries. Like how you have the anxiety on Sunday before going, some people, before going to work on Monday and it ruins your Sunday. You're not able to actually enjoy that day off because you're so nervous about, that's kind of like that energy is what I'm getting. Being stuck in that portion. Like always being ready to do something when you're meant to be resting, okay? It will pass. You need to let it pass though. Okay. Uh, which deck are we using for Sagittarius, please, Spirit? Well to know. Okay. Okay. So, Spirit, what do we have here for Sagittarius? My Sagittarian friends. How are you guys doing? I love you. I do hope you're doing well. I know things are tricky as shit right now for a lot of people, but I hope that um, you're hanging in there, okay? Feel free to hit me up in the comments. I do like to chat you guys up and learn about what's going on in your lives for sure. And I do have private readings open available if you're interested in that, okay? Check out my website in the description of the video. So two of pentacles, pentacle, pentacles, pentacles. Two of pentacles here at uh, the bottom. Balance, we're looking at balance. <laughs> So this process here, going between, well, two things, more than one thing, work and play. Maybe you are dealing with some Sunday scaries. Um, I am brought back to this resting, nourishing the body. That was weird that I put that away. Yeah, body care. Um, how's your diet, right? How's your um, exercise? How is your water intake? How are your electrolytes? <laughs> These seem like such basic things, but they're so critical to our health. Balance, balancing of electrolytes. Mm. That did come through if you didn't watch the intro with Fractalized here, programming your water to take something apart in order for you to come back together. It feels like, um... oh, interesting. Okay, so this mudra here, let me see if I can replicate it myself. What they say the rights up here. 
So middle finger, left hand is down lower, right hand is, is up here. Focusing on allowing really the wheel to do what it's going to do because we're not in control of that anyway. It will change. Change is the only constant. What I'm getting from this, so when we're doing a mudra, there is, um, there's an element to every finger, earth, wind, water, fire, and spirit. So ether, spirit, is the middle finger here. We're grabbing the middle finger from the left hand, receiving spirit, with um, air and fire being blocked here. Interesting. Um, so it could be something with another fire sign or air sign, but what I'm, what I'm getting from this is there's something about spirit, um, your spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs, something that is, is impeding your ability for this energetic flow to be healthy and balanced. Interesting. Okay, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, maybe this would be helpful for you guys, but get ready for the change, okay? Nothing to be afraid of, but... Um, New thoughts make them up, you know what I mean? You may start seeing things differently that require you to make decisions that don't, on the surface, look like the decisions that you want to make because it means things have to change. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Okay, Sagittarius? Okay. So two of wands to start. The Empress, Ten of Pentacles, the Mother of Pentacles, and the Daughter of Wands. Okay. Okay. So to start here, yes, it feels very much like there's a decision that needs to be made, you guys. Two of Wands. This is um, leaning into change, leaning into growth. Relinquishing a comfort zone for the sake of growth. So you're preparing to expand at this point. A decision must be made. You're at a crossroads. It could symbolize travel for some of you. Maybe there is a, a need to to decide on whether or not you want to travel somewhere for work, possibly. But this feels more like, um, like you can't keep going down this road. Like you could, but you're at a point where this is not the life you want to be living, is what I'm getting. This message may not be for everybody, but this is what I'm getting. If I have to take one more damn step in this direction, well, what, what do you want to do? What, what are you going to do? What are you prepared to do? to change that. To what extent are you willing to allow yourself change in order to live the life that you want? Hmm. I think that's a damn good question. <laughs> it's a good question to consider. Um, so what you're being asked to put on the back burner for right now, there may be a focus on this, but you're being asked to not focus on this so much. It's important, but right the second there's something else that's more important. Empress. So this is, um, this is the divine feminine, healing, nurturing. Um, intuitive. I feel like, so what is this about the mother as well? There could be something, there could be something to do with your mother. And maybe there's a mother wound. Mm. Maybe that's a part of what's making it difficult for you to to change something here. <laughs> what will my mom think? Hmm? Um, is, you know, is it your mom's head on that pillow every night <laughs> as you're going to sleep? Because if it ain't, um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You know what I mean? Interesting. I want a little bit more on that, please, Spirit. What is it that Sagittarius needs to not focus on here with the Empress? And there's three there too. Mm. Mind, body, spirit, father, son, holy ghost. <clears throat> I mean, that kind of came through. Yeah, maybe there is a religious component too. Daughter of swords, so page of swords. Um, this is a, a request to learn something or see something. It can be like paying attention to where you need to not be paying attention attention. I do kind of feel that for someone here. Who cares what your mom thinks? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure you're old enough to pay taxes, so. Uh, and I don't mean to be that flippant or dismissive, but whoever this is for, like, it ain't your mom's life, okay? It's just not. I would recommend, Spirit also recommends, 
um, living your life, right? Yeah, not going too far down the family tree. Interesting. So this isn't, like I said, this isn't something that isn't important. It will be at some point to address this. Um, but right now, this is kind of bogging you down. There may be an over-focus on your family tree, lineage, your mom. Okay, so moving forward. Ten of Pentacles, this is your focus, what you're being asked to, to pay attention to. Ten of Pentacles here is your ultimate material and spiritual abundance, your legacy. So I'm feeling drawn to, like I was saying, whose head is it on that pillow at the end of the night, end of the day? Focusing on that person's head. What is, the, what is it that you do want to create here or leave here as a legacy? Yeah, focusing less on where you came from or maybe, yeah, maybe there is a mom component here. Maybe you are concerned about what your mom is going to think about something that you're doing. I mean, there's, uh, I don't know, there's a lot that can be said. I get there are family dynamics and things, but it's super, super unhealthy to allow anybody to make decisions for you, okay? Like, I, I don't care what culture you're from. It's just not. <laughs> it's not. I get there are a lot of uh, deeply ingrained behaviors, but that doesn't mean that they're healthy, okay? I'm just getting, this is about you focusing, you're being asked to focus on what is it that you want to experience here? What is the abundance you want to have? What is the legacy that you want to provide? Where this leads, what it's good for. Mother of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. So this is, this is you finally stepping in and, and making the decisions that you need to make, okay? It does very much feel like, yeah, someone's kind of trapped in a <laughs> Norman Bates situation here um, where there is some cutting of the apron strings that needs to happen, I feel like. Like it's totally healthy and good to, to have a, a connection with our family members. This feels more like a narcissistic mother, okay? Like somebody who has worked their life to program you to be their little minion, okay? Not for everyone. Um, it may not be that extreme of a degree either. If it's to a lesser degree, this is just a reminder that you are you're in charge here. You're the one who gets to make your own choices. You're being shown how to make your own choices. The mother of pentacles here, she lives the life that she wants. Of opulence, of peace, of joy. Because she makes those decisions... To create that life so again back to what i was saying about like what what are you willing to change what are you willing to um to go through to change things choice is where it starts okay okay so um the advice you guys have at this time daughter of wands page of wands you're being asked to get excited about a new journey here starting something new Getting back to that place of like, um, what is that word? That joie de vivre. <laughs> um, this is my put me in coach card. Having that enthusiasm. Thank you, spirit. Having enthusiasm to participate in something, okay? Getting excited about whatever your life could be or you want it to be. Because it's changing. Things are changing. Always changing. Like you can... Eternal change is what's standing out here. You can decide to try to chase that wheel, but this is where, with the energy of the lion, you are constantly exerting energy. You're being asked to ride the damn ride. <laughs> ride the damn ride already. <laughs> Quit trying to operate it. Um, okay, let's do a crow card here for you as well. Last pieces for Sagittarius spirit. <laughs> Resistance, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is, um, you guys are resisting change. You're resisting changing something here right now. You're flying, you're pissing in the wind, okay? There's a, um, a wind you may be flying against here. There's a need to open up your wings rather than keep them closed. Again, I'm kind of drawn back to that example with the mother. Maybe you're feeling like your wings are clipped. They're not, not permanently anyway. But whatever it is that we're not changing, we're choosing, okay? And that could be the resistance that's coming through here as well. You're being reminded of exactly that. 
whatever is present in your life that doesn't work for you, you must understand is there because you are deciding that it's there, that it gets to stay there. Things don't change like this. Sometimes they do. But this feels very much like a situation where you're being asked to, to get your head on straight. To make the choices that align with who you are or who you want to be and the damn life you want to live. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Spirit. All right, Sagittarius, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here. I hope you guys have a beautiful however long until I see you again. All right, so I'm going to move into, where am I going? Scorpio. Scorpio. Oh, keep that there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Scorpio, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to go ahead and cleanse the space here. We'll get into your reading. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so what came through there was dynasty, dynasty caller. What does that mean? The caller of dynasty. Mm. I'm feeling like there is a, okay. There's like an ancient power. There's an ancient power you guys are either intentionally wanting to bring forward to, to draw out from somewhere, or there is this, um, this natural expression of this divine power, divine power, ancient power, hmm? stepping into that neck of the woods. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's examine it. Cool. All right. What's going on here for Scorpio spirit? And how are you Scorpio? How in the hell are you? <laughs> That's good to see you. Inspiration. Be creative. Yeah. Um, Saraswati Mudra. So I'm going to show this to you here and read the back. This mudra activates and synchronizes both halves of the brain. Take a deep, um, <laughs> deep breath of fresh air. Drink some water. Swing your arms and legs and give your hands a thorough massage. That water. Drinking water has come through here. Well, it was a part of the general here. That was a part of the symbol, too. Drink your water. You and Pisces especially so far. Um, While it's performing the mudra, visualize a constantly changing skyscape. Tinted white or dark clouds, storm, thunder, and lightning, a rainbow. Now not a cloud in the deep blue sky. After this, get some paper and a pen. Write down all the ideas which come about your project or your life situation, including the craziest, the ones you already had a long time ago, everything. Let them flow like a waterfall and see what happens. Saraswati, the goddess of creativity, shows me my talents and showers me with good ideas. I accept this profusion with joy and thankfulness. Yes, you do. Awesome. So um, this one, let me see if I can reproduce this here. Um, so pinkies, pinkies are being held down by the thumb. Middle and ring finger come down over that. And we're being connected like this, okay? All right. Inspiration. You are an inspiration, Scorpio. What do we have here for Scorpio? Animal spirit energy, please. Spirit. Oh. And if this reading is resonating with you guys, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I totally appreciate the um, support. I appreciate the appreciation, y'all. What do we have here for Scorpio? Mm. This is the Lionsgate portal here, too, um, that I'm filming on. I feel like, like with that inspiration, be creative coming through. This ancient power, hmm. Like this, this feels like something you're being, you're being called to express that energy through a creative project. Like writing, whether it's writing, like the card said, just for yourself or, um... for others potentially, but something in the creative vein. Okay. Um, two came out here, actually. The dolphin and the fire ant. 
So the dolphin is a very creative, energetic, fun energy. They're also intelligent. I feel like um, you're being asked to be intelligent about this energy as it is coming through. Making sure to be the, the vessel that is needed for this energy to come through. What might be standing in the way for you guys is the fire ant. Um, and this energy doesn't need to totally disappear, but the fire ant is uh, anger, aggression, frustration building up. It's this like heat, okay? That heat that's building up, that can, like this lightning bolt that's here too, that can be used to push you through a growth edge, okay? That energy that pushes a seedling through its encasing in order to grow, or it can be used to fester, <laughs> to boil. So what I'm getting is that this energy needs to be diffused. Maybe this is a part of that ancient energy that's coming through. Maybe it is a divine rage even that you're feeling. And I think it's important to know um, the distinction between those, okay? <laughs> Um, everything is not divine rage just because you want it to be, right? <laughs> just because you want to justify your own anger. Not that anger isn't justified, but anger is absolutely a secondary emotion and is serving to protect another emotion. So, um, I'm, I mean, you guys are up to deciding for yourselves whether it's divine rage or not. It doesn't have to be, but using that energy to move you forward is the point, okay? Transferring it into creative pursuits, things that are moving you forward in a positive way. All right. Um, which deck are we using for Scorpio? Please, Spirit. Zodiac, okay. This is such a cute little deck. Haven't been able to use this too much on the channel either. Only one other time. Okay. Uh, Justice here at the split to start. So uh, maybe there is some anger towards fairness and balance. You have that divine rage coming through again. What do you want me to say on that spirit? What I'm getting about the divine rage is that there may there may be components of where you are feeling angry that that is, you know, is a justified anger. Um, where you're being asked to be careful is how that anger is being sifted through this life. It's not saying that you are like ignoring it, not pretending that anger's there. That's really dangerous. That's not safe for yourself. I, okay, I'm getting the message of like, like there's a need to deal with that anger before it does get to a point where you don't feel in control of that anymore. King of Cups falls out here. Yeah. Finding that, that cool center in your experience while the waves around you are, are crashing about. That's not saying that you're not feeling something. Like I said, this is being the facilitator in the communication with your emotions instead of being um, one of the emotions themselves, okay? You're still in charge in that way, but a discussion is still happening, okay? All right, so what do we have for Scorpio, please, Spirit? Scorpio! <laughs> Queen of Cups, too at the bottom here. Um, so this quality, this is nurturing, loving, um, intuitive as well. You guys are deeply intuitive sign. Protecting one's emotions, okay? Talking about this balancing of, of um, how you are expressing emotions or protecting letting other people in. I feel like the message especially is making sure that this energy is going where it needs to go. Holding on to poison only makes you full of poison, right? And that's not very kind. That's not very kind to ourselves. Especially if you're wanting, willing is what I almost said, wanting, willing to utilize this symbol, like I told Sagittarius, be ready for the change that does come forward. And this isn't, uh, you know, anything that you don't want. That's It's just like the tying up of loose ends that need to be tied in order for you to morph into wherever it is that you're going next to make a clear distinction between where you've been and where you are or where you're going instead of having it all um, get so confusing and, and tied together. Okay, let's do it. Judgment is uh, 10 of pentacles or 10? 
Three of Pentacles. I don't have my glasses on, and uh, these are super tiny. Um, seven of Wands, Six of Cups, and then King of Cups there. Ish. All right. So judgment here to start. Yeah, I very much feel like this is a time for you where you are examining components of yourself. Whether or not you want them to be there. Is this who I want to be? Is this who I don't want to be? Right? You're hearing this call to move, maybe to move, to move to an experience, to a different part of your life. Um, but there's something that's holding you back. That's this anger, whatever this anger is. The anger that the fire ant is talking about. <sighs> Will I be strong? Will I be weak? Okay. Interesting. Can we get a little more information there on the judgment? Um, five of swords comes through here. So this is, um, this I feel like is, is a, a caution to self-defeat. You're kind of going back and forth between the two and three of swords, making this decision to use that sword energy to, to end one possibility, like I said, where you've come from to where you want to be or where you're going, to put an end to that or to put an end to heartbreak. Three of swords, loss. But this is, um, I feel like this is like you're finding yourself in conflict continuously. And if that's you, I mean, there's always going to be conflict. This is something that's like, I don't know what in the hell I'm doing wrong. It just seems like every, every step I take is, um, there is some sort of conflict there. Someone's up in my face about something or I got to defend something. You know what I mean? If that's you, what I'm getting is like with judgment here, there's a need to leave something in the past. There's a component of yourself, of your previous life that is dead. And it needs to be buried, right? There's rotting flesh, okay? And that could even just be the way that... The way that you um, treat yourself. Okay, let's keep moving forward here. So with uh, Three of Pentacles here, this is what you're being asked to put on the back burner for a second. It's important, but right this second, you're being asked to shift your focus. This is success in working with others. Recognition as well. Um, with the success in working with others component here, I feel like there is success in working with others. There may be something going on work-wise specifically for you. If it's not work, it's more of a personal life thing, um, where you're living, who your friends are, whatever. I'm not getting that you're being asked to like not work with anybody completely. You're being asked to shift your focus here though, with judgment to what might be festering within yourself. You're not gonna find, you're not gonna recognize, somebody's not gonna recognize that inside of you. This is a job that needs to be done yourself. But it, there's something that, um, whatever this anger, this fire energy is, that anger that needs to move on up and out, okay? So what you are being asked to focus on, you have Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands here is, um, this This can be this attitude of like, everyone's against me. I'm constantly needing to, to protect myself. It's courage. It's Leo energy attached to this here too. I feel like it's going to take, it takes bravery to, to make a journey like this, to really start examining ourselves to this degree. It ain't for the faint of heart, that's for sure. <laughs> what I heard a long time ago, the, the path of the heart is the path of the madman. Mm hmm. <laughs> and it's not not saying that, you know, you're crazy because I, I don't like that anyway. It's not that it's that it ain't for the faint of heart. You know, Scorpio, but even being such a, a, a deep, deeply oriented sign does not mean that it doesn't still take a deep amount of courage to face ourselves, <laughs> um, to have those conversations. So there's a, a great deal of bravery that's being requested of you right now. It's not easy, but it's worth it, okay? When you can get to the bottom of where there is a lack of control with this anger, okay? Is there anything else on that, Spirit? You move forward. We'll get... Okay. Okay. We'll come back to that. Um, where this leads, what it's good for, you have Six of Cups. 
Um, so the component of no nostalgia does stand out to me. I feel like a part of, uh, with the judgment, whatever needs to be examined or, or readjusted here, the call that you're hearing to move to a different life, there is something in the past, a person potentially, that this is pointing directly to. Like there's anger attached to somebody in your past that's coming up in your present life and it may even be coming through as divine rage, like I said, but there's something, there's something that is um, like with the five of swords, it's attached to a loss or heartbreak, that three of swords. And that decision that's not being made to cleave that, whatever, whatever that means for you. And it doesn't have to be for everybody either. If this isn't your message, it's okay to leave it behind. But this is also allowing yourself an opportunity to build new happy memories. It's giving your future self a gift, okay? By dealing with this shit. And this isn't a quick process. I, I mean, it could be for some of you, like becoming illuminated to what the anger is covering up is the most important thing right now. And then being honest with yourself about what you wanna do about that too, okay? Um, your advice here, King of Cups. So this, this fell out when we were shuffling too, a need to find that calm center. Um, what's coming through, and I don't typically like to say this, but um, there is a lot of truth to it too. Our emotions are not anybody else's responsibility, okay? Your emotions are not anybody else's responsibility. Emotions are, and I know that sounds cold, let me explain though, um, Emotions are messages. It's energy. The intention for an emotion is to give a message. We must receive that message and then decide what it is that we want to do about that, okay? We're not shooting the messenger, right? Just a messenger. When it comes to other people, it's helpful to know how somebody else is feeling, especially if we care about somebody or have respect for somebody or compassion, even pity, to know how we want to respond based on how somebody else is feeling. So it gives us the ability to make a choice on how we want to operate, but it's not, at the end of the day, anybody else's emotions are, are nobody else's responsibility except for that individual. And that's what I'm getting coming through is this advice, is to understand that. To let that be exactly what it is, truth. It doesn't mean that you have to be a cold person or to ignore other people's, how they're feeling. This is just, this allows it's permission for you, okay, to create safe spaces from other people's emotions. And it also holds you accountable to your own emotional experience. It's, I feel like it's bringing you into the space, whatever's underneath this anger, you're being asked to see it squarely. And once you see that, there may be a proclivity to project that onto somebody else or to make that somebody else's problem or to make them sorry for it, right? So this is coming through and just saying, once you see what this is, hold it. It's not for anyone else, okay? Whew. All right, Scorpio, that's, ooh, that's a, <laughs> that's a rough one. Um, let's go ahead and pull uh, an or Urban Crow Oracle here for you to close this out as far as advice. What's, okay, communication, communication. I was just saying that about emotions being messages. I feel like this is just spirits coming back and saying, yeah, yeah, what? <laughs> what he said, listen to the message. Okay. And this, like I was saying, please don't take that as like your emotions are your responsibility. That isn't to say, don't share your emotions with other people. It's still very important. We're all here to learn and grow. We're choosing relationships to learn and grow through relationships. It's important to share emotions through communication and thoughts so that we get to decide how to behave around those that we love, you know, respect, like I said. It's just putting it into focus for all of us to say that it is not acceptable, it is not healthy for us to make others, um, oh, how do I want to say that? Mercury's totally retrograde right now. I'm feeling that. Holding them accountable for your own emotions is what I'm trying to say. 
The ego loves to project when something doesn't feel comfortable. If we have to squarely look at ourselves, it can get uncomfortable. And you guys are more than capable of doing this. It's really just a, a reminder to be careful about slipping into the shadow as you're going through this process, okay? Please still reach out to a friend. Please share how you feel with people. That is important. It's important to me, you know, especially those I love, how, how people feel. This is just an opportunity to learn, if you haven't already, that they are ours. It's our responsibility, okay? All right, I love you, Scorpio. Love you. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. I hope you guys have a beautiful day, week, month, year, however long it is, again, until I see you. Hopefully not that long, though. Um, and yeah, feel free to, to comment there. Let me know what is going on for you guys. I do enjoy communicating with you as I can, okay? All right, so we're going to move into Libra. Libra, Libra, Libra. Hello, Libra. Hello, hello. I'm going to clear the space here real quick. Interesting. Got a little choppy there at the end, but um, <clears throat> it's kind of hearing an overtone on that one. Like a, like a higher frequency. What does that mean? There is a higher frequency attached to, to your energy right now. Mm. Okay, let's examine it. Let's examine. So we're going to start with a mudra card here for you, Libra. What's going on for Libra? Or what would be helpful for Libra at this time? Spedat. Openness. Open the windows of your soul. So, that bronchial mudra. This mudra clears the bronchial tubes and makes your breathing easier. In cases of acute breathing difficulty, maintain the mudra as long as necessary. In chronic cases, perform it four times daily for about five to ten minutes. While breathing out deeply and thoroughly, contract your abdominal wall. Imagine yourself to be sitting on top of a mountain. You enjoy the view, the space, and the pure fresh mountain air, which you are breathing in with deep lungfuls. At the same time, you're inhaling prana, as I'm having a hard time breathing. <clears throat> At the same time, you're inhaling prana, the cosmic life energy. Prana clears and heals your lungs, gives you strength, and supplies all your needs. I am open for what is a beauty and good. I accept it with thankfulness. Cool. So that is um, the thumb, thumb and middle finger coming together. Pinky and ring finger comes in. We're holding like this, okay? Hmm. Okay. Let's do an animal spirit message for you guys. What's going on for Libra? What does Libra need to know? Oh, interesting. <laughs> Is that? Okay, just the one this time. Uh, Scorpio just got this card. You saw me shuffle there. <clears throat> Fire ant. So this is an energy of, like, anger. A heat energy coming up. It could be, um, there is a caution to maybe how quick to anger um, you may be getting, or there could even be a caution to like how you're not expressing anger. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There is a need, either way, there's a need to better balance how that energy is being experienced or distributed. Okay. Uh, which tarot deck are we using for Libra, please, Spirit? Untamed, okay. Okay. I'll do the untamed tarot for you. Spirit, what do we have here for Libra? My Libra friends. And if this message is resonating with you guys, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I appreciate the support. The star here at the split. Um, so there may be a need to examine your emotional realm a little bit better especially with that message coming through and openness open the windows of your soul your soul is trying to show you something 
emotionally that <clears throat> you've been working not to see or maybe just haven't been able to see it yet. Interesting. Okay. Let's keep going. So the Eight of Cups. This is um, a need to walk away from something. Walking away or knowing that something needs to be moved away from. Um, this feeling of something missing, although there's not something missing. I feel like this is a, a detachment. If this is you in this situation, a detachment from this energy that needs to be expressed. Okay, let's keep going. So, Six of Pentacles, Five of Swords, Ace of Swords, mm, and Six of Wands. Three of Pentacles, okay. Let's get into it. Neighbor Libra. So, Six of Pentacles here. This is your give and take energy. That motion of inside giving what we can as we're able and nothing more and receiving when we do need to receive. So, I feel like... Um, it's okay to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I feel like you guys are probably more commonly the helpers. And there may be a struggle here to ask for help or to invite help in. To allow help to come forward. To open yourself up to help. Let's keep going. So five of swords here. This is the energy that you guys are being asked to table for a minute. It may be a focus or a highlight that's happening currently, and it could be important in the future, but right now you're being asked to focus on something different. <clears throat> this is um, conflict, fighting for the sake of fighting. So I feel like there's a, there's a caution towards, um, like if this is you, this anger doesn't just, like it's just not gonna be there because you don't want it to be there. It may be coming up, and this was similar to Scorpio. It may be coming up in ways that don't seem connected to something. Like, why, why the fuck am I so angry right now? What in the hell? <laughs> um, it seems like it's just out of nowhere, okay? To you and maybe to others as well, if this is you. Um, what you're being cautioned on here is flying off the handle. <laughs> if you do find yourself in situations where agitation or frustration seem to come out of nowhere, it's not that it's not connected to nothing. But you're being cautioned at um, just causing fights, causing issues because you're feeling however it is you're feeling. Agitation, frustration. What you are being asked to focus on here, what is important. So what I get is like, um, with anger in particular, the heat, embarrassment, anger, frustration, agitation, annoyance, any of those emotions. If those are coming up or when they come up, you're being asked to take a pause. Do not engage with that emotion out here until we look at what's actually going on. Ace of Swords here. This is cutting through the bullshit. The truth. Okay. Um, it can be a victory as well. But the sword here, the energy of the sword is cutting through something, separating something. The first time we experience the sword energy is when we're born, having the umbilical cord cut. So it seems like right now, something needs to be excised from your life. It could be the way that you're managing these emotions or experiencing them. It could be a person. It could be um, like a pining for the past, a past version of yourself. Whatever it is, you're being asked to be very clear and honest towards yourself, could be towards others too about what's going on in your life, what has happened in your life, where you are in your life, okay? This feels very much more like being honest with you. You're being asked to see something clearly. Anything else here on the Ace of Swords for Libra, please, Spirit? I don't remember who I was saying this to. Um, I was trying to make these, or I told myself I make these 10 minutes a piece. That's not how this is going. <laughs> but it's important to get the message out. 
High Priestess. Okay, so um, I had a dove come through. Was it Aquarius? Anyway, the High Priestess here, this is the subconscious realm, the divine feminine, the, the shadow portions of Isis or Venus. Um, so it does feel like something is, is working its way up from the dark, from the unconscious realm. The high priestess knows everything. Her guidance, her access to all of that information is only accessible, uh, when we are in a place of accepting honesty, being truthful. She requires that. That is a, a cost of admittance here. Okay. Um, but it feels like, like she's revealing a secret here. There's something information wise that is coming up connected to this heat. And now's the time to see it. But there's a need to, um, to not take an action based on an emotion right away. Okay. No knee jerk reactions right now. You're being asked to Take some breaths between when you feel an emotion and then deciding on what to do. Don't do the first thing that you think of. Do the second thing, okay? The first thing that comes up is typically like your ego response. Okay, where this leads, what it's good for. You have six of wands. This is a victory. Recognition as well. There is something you guys are being asked to see here. It's... Surviving the war, being celebrated for that, for that kind of victory. What, um, I don't know why I put that up there, that's weird. What, what is this here, the recognition, Six of Wands, please, Spirit. What's up? What's up with this? It's a tough one. King of Swords. Discernment, you guys. Back to honesty. <laughs> um... The King of Swords and the Queen of Swords are definitely the most intellectual. A lot of air energy here. They can be a bit disconnected from their heart in more shadow placements. Um, I am drawn back to the Ace of Swords here too. Like the imagery of the Eagle coming in around that sword. Now the King of Swords here, that Eagle is facing it dead on. It's like, what? <laughs> Um, I don't even feel like there's anything you really need to do. Like the mudra will help here. This symbol for charging your water, coming apart to come back together. These energies are coming up of illumination. Whatever is coming forward for you guys is happening. Your job is to face it. Okay. Don't back down. Don't back down. So the encouragement that you have advice at this time through pentacles, this is success in working with others. Recognition as well. <laughs> Recognition. I feel like you guys very heavily are being asked just to see. Just to see. Just don't even turn away. And this deck too, there's eyeballs all over <laughs> these cards. You're being asked to see, see you guys. You get better when you see. Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. Let's pull, uh, pull, pour, pull an Urban Crow Oracle card for you guys to finish up. What do we have here for Libra, please, Spirit? Last pieces of advice. The clock strikes three. Does it? It's seven. Oh, not three. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe it's mm, three years old. Something about the afternoon, after school. Mm. Okay. What do we have here for Libra, please, Spirit? Bond. So bond here is uh, reminds me of the lover's card. Somewhere where there is a deep emotional attachment <clears throat> or connection. Um, maybe you've lost somebody, maybe a relationship has fallen apart. Maybe somebody has physically passed here from this realm. I feel like this is a clue towards 
whatever this heat is coming up with the fire ant. It's okay to go back to that space, okay. Okay. All right, Libra, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. Um, I hope you have a beautiful day, week, month, year, however long it is again until I see you. I'm gonna go ahead and move into Virgo, my Virgo friends. Okay, hello, Virgo, Virgo. Uh, I needed to grab a little snack, so I'm back. I'm going to clear the space here real quick, set the tone. Hmm. So I'm seeing, um, uh, well, I guess it's a download symbol. It's a down arrow and then a line like you would see on your computer desktop. I believe that's download. So I feel like there's something you're to receive. Okay, what is it? What do you want me to say on that spirit? Be open. Okay, just um, not like watching anything, you know, incessantly, but I, I just feel like there's a message coming through of um, be, be prepared to receive some sort of illumination or, or download. Um, there's an amount of energy that's coming into your experience to help illuminate something for you, upgrade something for you, okay? Being open to it. Could be a process of initiation. <clears throat> and if that's the case, then consent is, is needed, right? Required. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into your messages. What do we have here, Spirit, for Virgo? for mudra messages what energy does virgo need right now well vitality <laughs> has a virgo rising virgo moon um yes i can say we do need some vitality so vitality staying young this is what this looks like here anti-aging mudra Ooh, we woo so this mudra does you good at all levels it is good for the lymph system and keeps you young while it's breathing out, press your hands together firmly and at the same time spread your fingers out. Repeat this several times every day, steadily increasing the number of times and how strongly you press your hands together. See yourself at a ripe old age, but still full of life, animated and mentally fresh and fit. People seek your company, feel at home in your presence, and enjoy your positive and encouraging words. I look forward to life's adventures with enthusiasm, anticipation, and gusto. Ooh, I like that. So... As you're bringing your hands together here and pushing, you're, you're pushing the fingers apart. Love that. Okay. I'm definitely going to be utilizing that one. Maybe that's a part of the download that's coming through here is just, just life force energy. You know what I mean? Staying open to being young. Hmm? Okay. What other messages do we have here for Virgo? Please, spirit. Animal spirit messages. Does Virgo no no need to know holding the peace was something that was holding the peace holding a peace holding a peace okay hey there's the elephant there this is pop through not actually out but kind of peeked its head out that was in um, what came through to me in the beginning seeing the elephant obliterating obstacles of some sort um, so two actually came through here zebra and oyster. So the oyster energy, this is, um, there's something, you can look at it like a pearl, a clam, you know, the, a pearl. Um, you have this pearl, there's something inside of you and it is too beautiful not to share. In fact, you're here to share it, a piece, rather than like holding a piece. You're holding a piece of truth, of experience. I like to describe, um, you know, as life or as a human, it's like life is this big house and we all are different windows on this house. We're all looking in at the same room, the same living room, the same kitchen, the same table, or maybe we can't see every room either. But every window has just a little bit different perspective on that table or that room. Some windows can't see certain rooms, you know what I mean? 
but we know that there's a house here because together we all hold these different pieces of perspective. It's supposed to be that way, right? Um, Zebra, I'm feeling drawn to <clears throat> open the book here. <laughs> I went to a coffee shop today and they had a zebra mocha and he said it was made with zebra milk. I just think that sounded terrible. <laughs> um, eccentric, creative, and visionary. So out of um, in balance, worldly, enthusiastic, and fashion forward, out of balance, jaded, pouty, and vain to bring into balance an epic adventure or art. I feel like um, maybe you've been craving an adventure or want to participate in something, but there is this lack of energy or vitality. This is literally, uh, like I said, it's a Virgo, rising Virgo moon. Um, vitality is a portion of what I have in my daily manifestation practice. Uh, having energy to do things is very important. So it feels like, like this pearl, maybe this is the adventure. It's time for you to share this. But it may seem to, to come with like, like the cost of entry is too high energetically. I have to do this and I have to do this and I'd have to do this. Interesting, okay. Let's get into your tarot messages. Which deck are we using here, please spirit? This may hurt. Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit more information on that. For Virgo, please. What's going on for my Virgo friends? Feel free to uh, keep me in the loop too, you guys. I'd love to hear about what's going on with you in the comment section. Uh, I do answer as I can. I do enjoy communicating with you guys. And please like, share, comment, subscribe if this is resonating with you as well. Page of Pentacles. Um, yeah, being clever. It does feel like, it does feel like there's a request to, to be intelligent maybe about your energy reserves. Okay. I'm like listening to the message at the same time. We'll listen to it later, okay? <laughs> Come back. What's going on for Virgo? What isn't going on for Virgo, right? Two swords at the bottom. Um, so yeah, I need to make a decision being at a crossroads. I do feel like you are feeling stuck somewhere and this does have to do with maybe having the energy to do something, but there's something about this being stuck that's also draining energy from you. Like this idea of the oyster with the pearl or clamming up, there's a need to open up. Like it's okay. It's seeming counterintuitive here. Like you only have so much energy to expend a day, right? And this is true. Only so many spoons. But by restricting or watching it so closely, and there are times where this is important, but there's something about right now where as you're restricting it or watching it too closely, it's actually taking more energy from you or it's taking energy from you to facilitate as a Virgo would, right? We love order. We love rules step one two three abc right it's a much needed energy um and somebody's got to got to play that role but it's feeling kind of shadowy okay like an over obsession on um <laughs> like from 8 to 8 15 i exert this force 8 15 to 8 30 this is this you know what i mean and schedules work differently for different people. I'm not saying don't do that if it's not working for you. But for somebody here, this is saying there is a need to to flow a little bit more. There is more life energy, vitality that's available outside of such a strict schedule. Okay? Or expectation. Interesting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the devil, king of wands, ten of wands, two of pentacles, and then Eight of Swords. Totally, okay. So it feels very much like Virgo. There, there might be a little bit of slipping, slipping and sliding into the Shadow Realm. And this isn't a failure. It's just, just a reminder that um, this is actually taking more away from us or you than um, the initial intention of helping yourself is or was, okay? So the devil, the devil coming through here. In the general, this is 
your shadow. Slipping into the shadow, like I said. These are the chains that keep us bound to this realm. Could be addiction, um, substances, an abuse of power. I feel like in this situation, it's pointing more towards like an abuse of power. You are very powerful in that realm, right? Mentally, both you and Gemini, um, a lot of Mercury energy. We are in Mercury retrograde as well. So this is a great opportunity time to start paying attention to what is coming up from our interior realm, from our shadow. We are more disconnected outside here, which Virgo, you know, versus like Gemini. Gemini can be a bit more social. Virgo is totally fine being the hermit, right? I definitely get a bit more hermity, hermit up when Mercury goes retrograde. Uh, Gemini Sun was my point. So um, yes, I just feel like this is coming. There's something coming up here in the shadow for you to see. And this is um, the abuse of power, like I said. That seems kind of extreme. You're just being alerted to maybe how you are utilizing your power or not. Okay. So King of Wands coming through here. This is, you're being asked to shift focus from this for now. It could be important in the future, but there might be an over obsession to this. This I get um, kind of like telling others what to do. The King of Wands is great. They're all leaders, the Kings, is great at leading others to um, complete a task or project. They're a facilitator, uh, a manager, okay? They don't get their hands in there themselves. They, they know how to direct everybody to do whatever it is they need to do to take care of whatever it is they need to take care of. So I feel like there may be there may be, that may be where there's some energy wastage as well. There's a reminder that there are a million ways to skin a cat, right? Not just Virgo's way. <laughs> and trust me, I get it, okay? I've definitely had to, uh, well, I haven't had to, but it's been pleasant working on that portion of my shadow, <clears throat> learning that it's okay to just shut my damn mouth, right? <laughs> Let somebody else take care of a task. Um, and instead of, I think that's actually a great example, you may be trying to delegate situations to people, but then you're coming through and micromanaging that too. It could be a partner, friend, whatever. What I'm getting from this is to truly allow somebody else to help. Truly allow somebody else to take on a task so that it's one task less that you have to take care of, take care of to learn to loosen up to that or open up, like the oyster's talking about. Open up to the reality that other people know how to get things taken care of, and it doesn't have to be done in just Virgo's way. I know it feels good. It's a good itch to scratch, and we are efficient, you know. But uh, it's okay to let others be themselves, too. So what you are being asked to focus on, you have Ten of Wands. This is um, releasing something, releasing a burden. There's an encouragement to continue on until you reach the end of something and get ready to release something at that point so that you can start another journey. Um, this I feel connected to the zebra here with adventure, having an adventure. There's so much that's weighing you down right now. And this could be the minutia of trying to keep everybody, you know, in your sights and doing what it is you feel that they need to be doing. I, I'm just getting that there's a request to focus on your own burden right now to focus on what needs to be released in order for you to find pressure, release, to find pleasure even. Because this is taking a lot of energy from you. Can we get a little more information here on the Ten of Wands? What needs to be released? Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, um, <clears throat> This is, this is your ultimate material and spiritual abundance. Community here, as you can see here, like this family. Um, building and leaving a legacy. I feel like something is shifting. Mm. Mm. Six of Cups here at the bottom too. Nostalgia, past versions of yourself, your inner child. <sighs> that vitality. I'm feeling like with the Ten of Pentacles... There's something that you've wanted, maybe even felt like, like, this is what I'm here to do. This is what I'm here to experience, or this is just what I want. This is, 
this is the legacy that I want to to build and leave. Um, I don't. For some of you, I feel like it may be time to look at where you do have energy to carry on with this. Um, you may need to shift your focus, okay, for some of you. For others of you, I feel like this is an encouragement with the Ten of Wands to keep going, to finish this off. I feel like that just feels incomplete, Spirit. What is the, what is the best course of action there? To pass on Knight of Cups. So, um, fool here at the bottom, faith, trust, pixie dust. Knight of Cups here, could be romance. The Holy Grail is something that comes through for me on this. Pursuing that, filling that cup. <clears throat> I am getting the recommendation here to not give up, okay? This Ten of Wands is more the finish the trek, okay? Finish the adventure. You're almost there. You're almost there. But there's a need to trust or to allow others to play the part that they need to play. You don't need to do all of this on your own. Okay. Uh, where this leads, what it's good for. Two of Pentacles. Better balance, you guys. It does feel like there's a strong message of um, opening, opening up, allowing other people in more or opening yourself up to others. This allows a better balance. It feels more from an energetic standpoint, like I said. Shadow Virgo, we can definitely get stuck on this is how something needs to be done. And it may be the most efficient, I get it. Like it probably is. Um, but we're not in control of other people. And that takes a lot of energy away from us to be that anal retentive, okay? And that's definitely a shadow quality, like I said. We can keep things in balance. So this is helping bring us into balance by trusting that others can, can help, even if they do it a different way, all right? Advice for you guys, Eight of Swords. Very Gemini energy here, too. This is a trap of the mind. So again, I'm brought back to the shadow side we're talking about here. This is circular. We may feel trapped in something, but we're, we're not. There is a way through. It requires that we look at something from a different angle, be open, be open to receiving new information that was coming like a, a download. I feel like there is access to the mundane. What does that mean? Triumph. There's, um, interesting, the way through here for you. may not be on your radar because it's not the most efficient path. Mm. Okay, interesting. Um, which oracle deck are we using here? Crows. Okay, let's do uh, an oracle card here to finish this off for you, Virgo. Last piece of advice, Urban Crow Oracle for Virgo. Something you don't want to do? Hmm. Ghosts. Ghosts. So, um... I mean, some of you may literally be seeing ghosts. Flashes in the corner of your eye. Um, I, I take this more as... Like the past, something we did have six of uh, six of cups there as we we're shoveling. Something from the past, nostalgia, maybe somebody from the past, somebody or something. Um, this may be the way through. Okay, revisiting this in some way. What is it they need to revisit? Hmm. The respect or honor. So, <clears throat> 
there may be something where you're not you're not allowing maybe something did end somebody did actually pass or a relationship is over somebody who's no longer in your life doesn't even have to be a person a job ending something that made you happy from the past a ghost a trace of, of what was you're being asked to um, to honor and respect that happening in your life or coming through in your life even with that ending in your life it may seem mundane to to lean into that but this is your this is your way through okay don't be afraid of no ghosts <laughs> it ain't gonna hurt you okay yeah there's something about facing facing this okay Virgo, I feel like I want one more that feels incomplete. Uh, last piece here on ghosts. Justice. Yeah, somewhere where you feel you were slighted or you didn't have balance or something wasn't fair, just. Could be a divorce, yeah, it could be an end of a relationship. A legal proceeding in that way. Something being decided out of your favor. Whatever this is, yeah, maybe something was taken away or wasn't fair. You're being asked to to, face, to honor and respect that for what it was. Which may seem odd, but but this is this is the way to like to calm that portion down so that you can come out of the shadow. Okay. All right, Virgo. I love you guys. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to get cleaned up here for Leo. My Leo friends, I hope you guys have a beautiful day, week, month, year, however long it is until I see you again. Alrighty. Okay. Leo, Leo, Leo. All right, Leo, hello. I'm gonna get the space cleanse here one moment. Um, so I was seeing, uh, two hours, 12 minutes, 12 seconds on the timer. First of all, two, one, two, one, two. Um, I was seeing the, the dove above the ace of cups in the standard Rider weight imagery. So this idea of like, of spirit, okay. Peace, tranquility, peace, leading the way, spirit leading the way. Okay. Let's get into your messages here. Um, I am recording this on 8-8, the Lionsgate portal as well. And happy Leo season, everybody. Um, I do think this is an alert too. I am moving forward, going to start doing a bonus reading for the sign that we are in. So once, once a month, I do readings for the signs. I do these all signs readings every once in a while as well. Um, so once a month, I think I'm going to start doing a bonus reading for that sign, which would be you, you guys at this point. Um, so don't hold me on it or, or hate me if I don't get to it, but I'm going to try to get that initiated here in Leo season. Okay. All right, spirit. What do we have here for Leo? Our sunny friends. These are Amudra cards, by the way. So, um, take a step back <laughs> and I don't have my glasses on here. I can see. Okay. But I have a really bad astigmatism. So things just get blurry. I, th I thought this said, I'm going to take a step back. <laughs> I'm going to take a step back. Take a step back. No hassles. <laughs> stomach mudra. So it fortifies the stomach and calms, calms the nerves. All kinds of strife and annoyance represent stress, stress for the stomach. They cost energy and wear one down. If anger is unavoidable, let it flow by drumming on a wall with your fists and then practice the mudra. While you are keeping the mudra, breathe in slowly through your nose 10 times and breathe out loudly and forcefully through your mouth. After that, allow your breathing to become regular and more gentle. Imagine yourself wearing a captivating smile with which you calmly and coolly win over the world. Calmness and equanimity are witness to my inner strength, which is you. You guys are the strength card, which is all about that inner strength. 
So when it's talking about like pounding on the wall, um, we're not like busting a hole through the wall, right? You can actually do this on the ground too. Um, they call them like controlled tantrums or fits. There's something about this process of allowing your body, like a child would like, you know, you're not going crazy. You're doing it in a controlled way, but it allows that anger or that energy that's stuck there to move through. So it recommends moving that through and then moving into the mudra here, which is, um, was it on the thumb? Yeah, take a step back here. Is it wrapped around? Yeah, holding that way, okay. And then doing the breathing will help move that energy through. Spirit, what do we have here for Leo, animal oracle wise? What's going on for Leo? a penguin. I wish that this deck had a penguin, but they don't. <laughs> um, the swan comes through here. Beauty and grace. She is beauty, she is grace. It's Miss United States. So the swan, um, I feel it's a very um, highly spiritual energy. I do get this quality of protection here. Innocence, purity. The dove was coming through, like I said, in um, while I was ringing the bowl. This white, the white color. Um, there's something about like purifying. Okay. You may be dealing with a need to release something right now. You may know what that is. You may not. But I feel like it's surrounding. We've had a lot of frustration and anger come through the signs as I'm doing this reading. And, and starting to release that. We are in Mercury retrograde at this point. So stuff's going to be coming up for us to deal with to be able to deal with, okay? It's not, we're not forced to. But I feel like this is a time of, uh, of purifying, letting spirit take the lead here to show you how to do this. I think that controlled tantrum for someone you got is, is very important. I think that'll be very, very helpful for you. Okay, um, which tarot deck are we using here for Leo? Modern Witch, okay. The Hierophant, it split two here. And Four of Swords. Taking a rest. Uh, but the Hierophant, this is a spiritual leader. Letting spirit take the lead here. Okay, what do we have here for Leo? Please, spirit. 21717. 17. What's going on for Leo? And uh, feel free, you guys, you know, to hit me up in the comments. I do love to to keep up on what's going on with you guys as I can. If this reading is resonating with you, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I appreciate the support. All right. The Hermit. Wow, wow, wow. Um, Virgo energy here. This is going inside. Understanding that we have all the direction that we need inside of us. This is totally Mercury retrograde energy. So the Hermit is actually closing the laptop of knowledge. This is the high priestess's laptop of knowledge, closing that access to the outside world so that they can start navigating their interior world. Spirit is leading this pursuit, right? So this Mercury retrograde seems to be, it feels pretty weighty, I'll be honest with you, but it feels more important or, or it is, oh my gosh, what am I trying to say? Mercury. <laughs> this is an important Mercury retrograde for you guys, okay? It feels like something something will be coming up that's been needing to be seen for a while. Maybe it's been trying to, but you're not, you've been trying to ignore it or just missing the message. Just situations being difficult to see. Now's the time, okay? Ooh, the sun. Seven of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, and Queen of Swords. Okay. So the sun. This is one of your cards as well. Yay. Um, positivity, happiness, joy, abundance, success. This is also the inner child. Um, it feels like... Yeah, there's, what is it about the child? 
Letting your child take the lead. Hmm. Getting back to what were you passionate about as a child? It's time to wave that flag. Hmm. Okay. Anything else around the sun? The chariot. Positive forward movement. It may not always be easy to to take to have this progress, but um, it is possible. Okay. A need to take courage as well. I feel courage with the sun as as well. Um. There's a component of faith with the chariot too. Back to spirit. These sphinxes that are, it's a motorcycle in this one, but that are carrying the chariot. Uh, if the rider were to look down at that, they see they're, they're not attached, but the chariot is still moving. How is it moving? Well, the guidance of spirit, of course. <laughs> Christmas magic, of course. <laughs> um, you're being asked to have faith, to let spirit lead. Let that come through. I, f I feel like it's leading you towards something that you were passionate about as a kid. Now's the time to express that or experience that. So um, what you're being asked to pull focus away from right now, Seven of Pentacles. This may be important in the future, but right now we're not focusing on it. We're going to be focusing on the Six of Pentacles. We'll move there in a second. So Seven of Pentacles, this is, um, this is patience. It is honing your skills. There's a component of this that has to do with loss too. So I feel like uh, what this is saying is... Like there's a need to prepare for the trip before hopping in the car and just going. Not that there's, you know, that's wrong either. But in this moment, there is a, there's a request to step away from um, even planning for that journey yet. Okay. Like we're, we're not, uh, we're not ready to, plan anything about this trip. You may want to take a trip. This doesn't have to be a literal trip. Something you want to do, something you want to change. There's, um, there's something that needs to be received first with the Six of Pentacles. What is it about the Six of Pentacles here? What needs to be received? Five of Cups. So this is um, regret, disappointment. What I'm hearing is to disarm. There's a need to turn away from that which disappoints us. These three cups have been spilled. But what was in those cups contained something that we didn't have a taste for anymore anyway. So there's a note of pragmatism to this as well. As we're turning towards these cups that we still have. There's something about that action that is disarm. What is this disarming? Because you have seven of swords as far as where this leads, what it's good for. And this is um, a sneaky theft betrayal kind of energy. A need to be diplomatic, to take only what is needed in a situation. In like a lion, out like a lamb. What um what I'm feeling from this such whatever this trip can I get a little more on the seven of pentacles actually? That was really weird. I know you couldn't fully see that, but this card fell out and it just like sat on the table like this for a second. Okay, that was that gives me the chills. Interesting. Magic. <laughs> Five of swords here, clarifying the seven of pentacles. Um I'm still just kind of blown away with that. With that sitting there, it's almost like, like there's a hangman kind of energy, like a pause trying to show you um, that you're right in the middle of, of this. I need to make a decision, broken heart. This is conflict, the five of, of uh, swords here. You could be the person taking the swords. You could be the person having the swords taken from you. <clears throat> What I'm getting from this, and I don't know what the situation is specifically different for everyone, but it's important to shift your focus on whatever this conflict situation is. 
if you are someone who is creating conflict or conflict is just present in your life at all times, um, having a focus on that or focusing on a situation where you did have someone take your swords away or you were the one who took their swords away, caused heartbreak or loss, took a choice away from somebody or you had a choice taken away from you. Whatever the case is, you're not being asked to forget about all of it. You're being asked to shift your focus from it, okay? It's not about it happening. There's something where someone is getting lost in that behavior. And if it's trauma, you know what I mean? If you're stuck in a, a trauma cycle, go get some help. Find a way to get help or um, find a way to help yourself. Six of Pentacles, this is giving help, receiving help, okay? Can be seeing a counselor as well. Mm, it could be exactly what's going on here for you guys. The disarming. Yeah, totally. Okay. Your PTSD triggers or trauma triggers. It's like a, a bomb waiting to go off. A trap that's been set. There are tools that you're being asked to receive here. And if you can't get into a counselor, I understand you know, people's situations. The internet is free. And there's a lot out there. Okay. How do I deal with trauma? How do I gain tools to work on trauma triggers? Like, the internet is free, okay? But this requires that we make the decision to turn from what has disappointed us to what we have. What we have is our ability to help ourselves, okay? Um, and leading to the Seven of Swords, like I said, this is you finding a way to be diplomatic with yourself, taking what is needed. which is action to help yourself. So your advice at this time, you have Queen of Swords. <clears throat> there is a need to be honest. It could be with someone else. You may need to be honest with somebody else, but this is more being honest with yourself, I feel like. There's a component of mourning that can be a part of the Queen of Swords. You're, you're being requested to, um, if you are mourning, going through that process with radical honesty. Which at some point, like you're going to need to be honest about whatever the situation was that happened. But you would also need to be honest with yourself about where you are in that place and how you may or may not be contributing to you feeling better or worse. Okay? Having better discernment on where your mental energy is going. And she is pointing to the seven of pentacles here and the five of swords on that process of, like she's pointing this way here, um, of where you're being asked to shift your focus from the loss and from the conflict, okay? And again, it's not like you're totally shutting it off, just we're shifting the perspective or how we're dealing with that energy. Something needs to change in order for something to change, right? Okay, last piece of advice here for Leo. Whoop. On the ground. <laughs> Curiosity, yes. So you guys are just being asked to be curious right now. And this is something that um, I've heard a lot in counseling. We're stepping away from judge and jury. We're stepping away from right and wrong. We're stepping away from black and white. Because all that allows us to do is see, this, see the things that we see in the same way. Okay? Which doesn't help us grow or learn or heal. Um, there's a need to become curious about our behavior, about our environment, to look at why we're doing something or why somebody else did something, right? We not, we may not be able to always figure it out, but it's, it's allowing us to step outside of our circle track. Okay. And that's, that's what you're being asked to do right now. Or the advice is that's being given. Check your boots. <laughs> A boot at the door there. Check for spiders. <laughs> I don't mean to freak anyone out if you're afraid of spiders. I just came through. Okay, Leo, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here. I hope that you have a beautiful day, week, month, year. However long it is until I see you again. I'm going to get cleaned up here and move into cancer. Cancer, cancer. Leo, please take care of yourselves. 
Um, if you do have something going on you want a little additional help with, I do have private readings open and available, okay? You can check out my website in the description of the video. All right, so Cancer. Cancer friend, hello. I'm gonna get cleaned up here. Hmm. But I feel like as soon as I was ringing that too, it was like um, these sunbeams, <laughs> uh, these rays, ray of hope, ray of light. Quicker than a ray of light. <laughs> um, we are, I'm filming here on Lion's Gate Portal 88. We are in Mercury Retrograde at this time too. So going through this process of um, well, hyper manifestation, really being having universal energy support surrounding moving things along quicker. Okay. As far as what we want to manifest and with Mercury retrograde, being able to see things that are going on deep inside that we may not be able to see. So quicker than a ray of light, having that come through, I feel like you guys are seeing more than just what you normally see emotionally, visually, intellectually, you are a deep water sign. You are used to feeling your emotions, um, understanding the emotions of others. Yeah, there's something about um, like an illumination to, to life, to your life, to life. Okay. Okay, well, let's look into it. Let's examine it. Uh, I'm gonna pull a Mudra card here for you. Spirit, what do we have for Cancer, Mudra card wise? Mudras are hand symbols or gestures that um, combine the energies in our hands, fingers, to produce specific effects. <laughs> Illumination into life. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have the chills here. Higher meaning. <laughs> Be profound. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me show this to you. Just like... <laughs> Higher meaning, be profound. So Panava Mudra, gesture of self-realization. <laughs> right on point, okay? Something's being illuminated about the grander design of life. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> oh my God, Cancer. I love you guys so much. I mean, I don't have any favorite signs. I do very much vibrate with um, with a, a cancer frequency. 66 is the number of this too. 66 can symbolize um, being on the right track, love coming through. I love this, oh my gosh. Okay, what is, what is the meaning of life? Holy moly. What is the sense in all the challenges which we have to face and the blows of fate which buffet us one, one uh, which buffet us time and again? I find the yoga philosophy to be a help in approaching these questions. It teaches us that we can still instill meaning into our lives by uh, setting ourselves tasks which help us to inner growth, wisdom, and integrity, as well as through prayer and meditation, which bring us closer to the divine. We will certainly never get to the bottom of it all, but that, that in itself makes sense. Place your thumbs at the base of the little fingers with your hands in front of your solar plexus and facing forwards. Say or sing the following affirmation with fervor. My life and all that I do here and now are the expressions of a deeper meaning. Awesome. It's not lost on me either, this, you know, the flower imagery here. It's very much like we're diving into a new life or into life, right? Oh, interesting. <laughs> Dead on, right out the gate. Okay, I love this. Thank you, spirit. Um, animal messages here for cancer, please. The Wild Unknown Animal Oracle deck. <laughs> Holy moly. <clears throat> this feels like a heavy Mercury retrograde period. <sighs> yeah, yep, yep. But I feel, look, with this message for you guys, something profound is coming, coming forward as far as your understanding, realization of life and how you fit into it. Phoenix comes through for you. Yep. An opportunity to, uh, to come back from something. Uh, the Phoenix rising is that energy, uh, Kundalini energy moving from the root chakra to the sacral sexual chakra to the solar plexus chakra. That process is the Phoenix rising. So it's, it's like, it's taking your place back in 
establishing you, your experience, your existence. What that means to you so that you can understand or others can understand what that means to the greater design as well. Stability and support, moving into life force energy, moving into identity, into your solar plexus. So finding, again, like an illumination into yourself and into life. <laughs> Love it. Cool. Um, which tarot deck are we using here for cancer, please, spirit? Untamed? No? Phantasma. Okay. Okay. So, Phantasma deck here. Spirit, what do we have for Cancer? <clears throat> These ended up being much longer than I expected them to be, but that's okay. I had the energy to do them. I was trying to keep them to 10 minutes a piece, but no. Oh, had a few kind of flip over here. The Sun, King of Pentacles, and Ace of Wands. Mm. So there's that Sun, that illumination. King of... Uh, Excuse me, King of Pentacles is uh, generosity, giving, abundance, <clears throat> doing what needs to be done, being willing to put the work in. Um, like a good parent, protector, friend. And then Ace of Wands, this vitality, this energy. Starting a new journey. Being given the energy to manifest. And looking at secrets of life here for you guys. A happy disposition, mm, happy countenance. A happy countenance brings a happy disposition. Mm, okay. Um, countenance, that's our face, right? So having a happy countenance, and it's not that you're just doing this to placate anybody or for anybody else. It literally does release happy hormones, though, in our system. So... I feel like just in that, you're being illuminated here to uh, that little secret, okay? That little mood booster changer. Nine of Swords. Anxiety, nightmare. Maybe you're feeling stuck in some emotions here. So that may not be for everybody, but whoever that was for, um, you're not smiling because I asked you to smile or anybody else has asked you to smile. You're smiling because it's medicine, okay? Because you can and you know that... Um, it's a form of biohacking. It's telling your brain to allow you to feel a certain way, okay? Try it, check it out. We're done, you know? Four of Pentacles here at the bottom. So um, security, stability, safety, that which allows you to feel that way. You guys, there may be an over-focus on that right now, or you guys are just uh, pursuing this, okay? Maybe you're putting a bit more energy into career, into your finances, into your financial support here. You are being encouraged, though, not to miss out on smiling, not to miss out on having fun um, in this process, okay? Life will pass you by. Okay. Seven of Swords, the world. Knight of Cups, Four of Swords. And then the Mentor. Okay. All right. So Seven of Swords here to start. This is um, <clears throat> a sneaky theft betrayal kind of energy. I feel like being in the general here for you guys, there is an illumination here to... Um, the things that, that we may be doing or that we can do that can be taking things away from us, okay? I, back to that message with the happy countenance. Like, I'm not saying, you know, especially if you're not feeling well, you're grieving. We're not ignoring how it is that we're feeling. Um, but we are giving ourselves the best chance to feel the way that we do want to feel. And feeling happy all the time is not possible. That should not be a goal, okay? Peace, you know, content. Th those are... Those are achievable baselines. Happiness is a byproduct of doing those things that allow us to be happy and allowing ourselves to experience that too. I feel like that process of just even, you know, you're noticing you're not feeling well or going and smiling at yourself in the mirror saying, hey, beautiful. Hey, sexy. What's up? I love you. I'm proud of you. You're doing well. I see that, you, you know, you're, you're putting everything, your whole damn ass into this situation 
and I'm excited for you for what's to come. Those moments of showing yourself that you can change a situation, that's the important part, okay? Doing just what's needed in that moment. If you're trying to get yourself out of a situation where you do feel stuck in shitty emotions, um, and there are some emotions that just need to be gone through, but um, we can make the decision to make it harder on ourselves, to stay there longer, or to do what we need to do to help ourselves through that quicker, okay? Smiling at ourselves, being kind and gentle, giving ourselves praise. Those are definitely ways to help start moving us past being diplomatic, winning the battle to avoid the war, okay? It may seem like a small win, but it's actually a big deal. Try it or don't. <laughs> so what you're being asked to move or pull focus away from right now, you may be focused on this. Um, it will be important in the future, but right now, Knight of Cups is important. The world. So this is an ending. The grand ending. Hmm. Some of you may, and it's not for everybody, and I don't normally like to talk about this, but some of you may be focusing on um, death. Whether for yourself or, you know, you've lost somebody. <clears throat> Spirit is encouraging to step away from, like, this is interesting to me with this mudra. This is the beginning of right that portal birth we're looking more at like birth and creation and life this being like the great end again though that portal stepping through that portal now is not the time for an end now is the time for a beginning okay hmm. <laughs> put that in your pipe and smoke it yeah um Interesting. Okay. So typically, you're full of love, right? You are, as a Cancer. You have a deep compassion for humanity. And that's beautiful. I love that about you guys. I love that about myself, Cancer Venus. Um, what I'm getting from this card, you're being asked to shift focus away from. I'm seeing all these hearts growing these flowers here. Normally, you are a breeding ground for that kind of love, right? For helping others and in, in nourishing and nurturing others. Very like Queen of Cups energy is what I'm getting. The cups in general. You are being asked to um, d divert the fertilizer from that for just a second, okay? We're taking care of ourselves in this place. And we are a Mercury retrograde, like I said. So it's less about connecting with those around us and more about connecting with ourselves anyway. You're being asked to see what feeds you. You are so good and intuitive about picking up on what others need to eat, what it is that they need. You're being asked to start or get better at um, learning what those things are and giving them to yourself. Okay? Okay. All right. Cancer. So your focus, 242, 42, 242, <laughs> 242. Um, your focus right now is the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups, it can be about romance, pursuing that which makes us feel good, okay? I feel like that is, that's the main message here. Not to become hedonistic, to, to go over into that, um, to shoot too far, <laughs> so to speak. <clears throat> but you are in a place right now with fertile ground. That's how you want to look at it. There's fertility. There's fertility here, okay? You're being shown where there is fertility or how to be fertile. So what you're being asked to focus on right now is to decide what it is that you want to grow. And I feel like this is a part of the download that's coming in for you guys is realizing the part that you play. It isn't just about... Like even with the cards, with God, universe, it isn't just, you know, someone passing everything out to you. There's so much where we are participating in how this plays out, okay? Choose your own story. Remember those books where you flip around? You do get to go back if you, if you accidentally died, though. You do get to go back, okay? But figuring out what it is that you want to grow right now. Because you either you have access to that right now or you will shortly be realizing just how fertile this moment is for you to grow. Okay, 
So where this leads, what it's good for, for four of swords. This is um, taking a break, you guys, rest, recharging. I feel like, yeah, this is changing. This is changing a major component of the way that you interact with yourself, behave with yourself. Like there, there has been this um, a little Band-Aid on the polar bear. There's been a bruise, right? This, um, where you've been though, it's like you're not allowing, or you haven't been allowing, whether intentionally or unintentionally, you haven't been allowing yourself the space to heal. I'm seeing like picking a scab. Mm, putting that Band-Aid on there. You need to put a, one of those dog cones on around yourself. <laughs> Um, I see that actually that example of like a dog, <clears throat> they don't know, or a cat, <clears throat> they may just incessantly lick a wound because that's their natural drive is to take care of a wound in that way. We know though, that something needs to be left alone in those situations in order for it to heal. So we have to override their natural desire by intervening to allow them to heal. Um, this situation for you right now, what's being illuminated, is giving you the ability to pick this up as a skill, to know when to stop licking your wounds. Even though it may be difficult, you know, maybe you're addicted to the pain, licking the wound, it needs, it needs to heal. It needs time to scab over and to be left alone but it still needs care and love. Okay, okay, okay. So the advice for you guys at this time, you have the mentor, the hierophant, and hey, it's it's an elephant, an elephant. Um, that was coming through in the beginning for the collective portion, this like obliterating obstacles with the elephant, being wise, gaining wisdom. This is a major obstacle for you guys. That practice of knowing knowing when to lick your wounds or knowing when to stop licking your wounds. Knowing when to leave something alone in order for, for it to take advantage of its own understanding of how to heal. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I'm getting, getting out of our way. Yeah. Okay. But the mentor here, um, it could be helpful for some of you to pursue spiritual guidance. But what I'm getting here is to, um, to do something a little bit differently, to break the, the pattern, to break what it is that you are used to doing. This is if you're struggling to get over something, okay, you guys? If, if you're in a place where you are the evolved form of cancer and you are just this emotionally intelligent and know when to do this, Good on you, honestly. We super need that energy in the world. You healing yourself is allowing all of us to heal. So thank you. Meditation too, okay, you guys? Totally. Um, oh, so this elephant has these little like, like the sunbeams coming out of their third eye. That came through, I just got all the chills on that. In the beginning with the, with the singing bowl, Yep, the illumination is coming through meditation, okay, you guys? So get off your ass, sit down on your ass, <laughs> and start meditating, okay? Oh, I'm excited for you. Yay. All right, um, oracle card here. Crows, we'll do the crows. It's been the crows for everybody. The crows have eyes. <laughs> Shit's creep. No. All right, cancer. Uh, last piece of advice here for cancer, please, spirit. Ooh, self-interest, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So self-interest here, um, <clears throat> selfishness, okay? But selfishness is not uh, a good or bad word. It really depends on how we're engaging with that energy. Self-interest, with this coming through in this capacity, I feel like I was saying earlier here, there's a need to kind of stop 
not that you're completely cutting everyone off, but um, right now you need that energy for you. And that is selfish and that is a good thing, okay? And if you, when you hear the word selfish, if that is triggering something inside of you, uh, pay attention to that, okay? Because selfish is not a bad word. I mean, I don't like good or bad anyway, but this being selfish right now in what you're going through, is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. Again, it's not that you're not helping other people, but having a bit more discernment, at least for right now, at least for this Mercury retrograde, you can go back to giving as much as you do after Mercury retrograde. Right now though, you need that energy, okay? Choose you, boo-boo. All right. Okay, Cancer, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. I'm gonna get cleaned up um, and move into Gemini, my Gemini friends. So I hope you guys have a beautiful day, week, month, year, however long it is until I see you again. If you are going through something a little bit more personal and would like some help, I do have personal readings open and available. You can check that out in the description of the video, okay? Okie dokie. Okay, so Gemini, I'm gonna get the energy cleared here one moment. Hmm. Ah, lovely. So I was kind of seeing there as that was ringing, um, like an open eye here on the bottom and then a closed eye just above that. Um, and you'll see, you'll see what? Engagement. Mm. You'll see when you engage. Okay, your part. Mm, okay, your participation here. Your intention to see, whatever this is, is dictating whether or not you see. If you're making the choice to close your eyes, there's nothing to see. Okay, and this I know this is an ableist metaphor. <clears throat> to see physically, opening them allows you to see. Okay, I'm taking the example away from the third eye, just on a, a rudimentary level. Okay, thank you, spirit. Uh, we'll pull a Mudra card here for Gemini. What what do we have going on for Gemini? Ah, I'm a Gemini friend. <laughs> what does Gemini need at this time? A break. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I feel you. Feel you, Gemini. Acceptance. Come to terms with yourself. Yeah. A damn break already. So, uh, Pelvis Mudra. This mudra relieves abdominal cramps and menstruation pains. First of all, massage the ring and little fingers of both hands about a hundred times. While keeping the mudra, breathe deeply, abdominal breathing, breathe using your diaphragm. And whilst you breathe out, feel how tension in your belly is released and dissipates. Then lay your hands on your belly and allow their warming energies to flow. Imagine that you are painting a mandala on a silk cloth using lots of red, orange, and yellow. Lay the picture like a warming cloak on your belly and let the tones unfold their regenerative and healing effects. I use and enjoy the good times and indulge myself when I need to. Yeah, okay. All right, and that's um, these three fingers here. So middle and, and pointer fingers are, are, are coming up here. And it doesn't have to just be for menstruation cramps, okay? Or abdominal cramps. This is a form of acceptance, about accepting what is, okay? So that something can flow. Moving away from resistance. Closing your eyes may be that form of resistance. Okay. Okay. What do we have here for Gemini? Animal, animal spirit messages, please. Please. <laughs> My Gemini friends. Ooh. Too many. Just one, please. Just one. Uno, por favor. Um, how are you guys doing? Anyway, happy Mercury retrograde. My goodness. Happy Mercury retrograde. Ooh, the cheetah. Ah, so cheetah here. This is um, very sun energy, very divine masculine energy. This is about action, about taking action. Um, 
I feel like... Hmm. A redirection of action. You, um, so typically like outside of Mercury retrograde, great time to, to take action on something. You can start something new during Mercury retrograde. It's not you know, like a major faux pas. There is a caution towards just making sure that you're paying attention to details a bit more than you normally would. Over communicating, um, taking more notes, you know, doing that extra pie graph. I don't know. <laughs> Just to know that um, you're more especially sure on what you want to do. Caution towards signing contracts, things like that during Mercury Retrograde. Uh, travel as well, be safe. So with acceptance coming through here too, I do feel like there is a portion, like maybe you are wanting to engage with something right now. Like I said, not saying you can't, but you are being asked to take extra time right now to look at the details, okay? to be as pragmatic as possible about that. Can this wait until after Mercury is done? You're being asked to be present right now with the Divine Masculine, okay? Something about accepting that moment. Okay, um, which tarot deck are we using here for Gemini, please, Spirit? This may hurt. All right. So, what do we have here for Gemini, please, Spirit? My Gemini friends. Eight of Pentacles flies out here. Um, so work, hard work, um, passion that you put towards your work. You may be feeling burnt out on something. Nine of Swords here, having a hard time sleeping, anxiety. I feel like something is feeling a bit nightmarish, you know? Having a nightmare, waking up from that nightmare into another nightmare. So this may, this may be spurring um, motion, action for you to start like get the hell out of some situation. Every situation is different. Maybe you do need to do that. I'm just getting a request to um, take into consideration what your energy level may be, what you're able to expend, and trying to look at how you may be viewing a situation based on your energy level. Like if we haven't eaten for a while or, or had water, um, we may be feeling cranky, right? Um, some people are a little bit more aggressive when they don't eat than others, but I feel like the message is kind of the same. Like, um, don't make a decision while you're hungry. <laughs> don't go grocery shopping while you're hungry, right? Okay. So four of wands here at the bottom. Crossing a major threshold or mile marker, celebrating something. Um, a short one victory. I feel like... marriage for some of you possibly i feel like um you either experienced a win recently or you will here soon um but it's you were hoping it would have lasted longer like how you felt about this hmm okay anything else you want me to say about that no um, High Priestess, Ten of Cups, Two of Cups, The Emperor, and Temperance. Wow, 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 wow. Um, you and Sagittarius, I mean, you guys are opposite the wheel there, but there's just like, it's always a wink, I feel like. There's always a wink. So the High Priestess coming through here in your general, I do feel like the High Priestess is offering some sort of knowledge right now, an initiation. This is um, the unconscious realm. And I feel, like, I feel like this is why there's a caution towards like taking action on something because it takes the time it takes. Mm. And being human takes a whole hell of a lot of time. Um, there is something bubbling up from the subconscious that is either required, necessary, or just damn helpful to... Um, to make this action more efficient or healthy or possible. But she's gonna reveal this in the time that it takes her to reveal it, okay? Go grab a snack. 
it's going to take the time that it takes with acceptance yeah there's definitely a message of like a patience coming through especially with temperance there too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. with the ten of cups and the two of cups they're definitely like a family relationship love kind of vibe coming through here connection in general Okay, let's break this down. Break it down. Ten of Cups here. This is in the position you're being asked to pull focus away from, move focus away from. This may be something you're fo uh, focused on right now, and it has importance, but not right now. Two of Cups is what's important before that. So Ten of Cups is um, love, connection to the divine, a happy family. So I do feel like some of you are maybe feeling disconnect. Maybe a family situation has broken apart. Blood or chosen. Friends. Romantic relationships. Like something has shifted where it just ain't the same. Varying degrees of that. And there's something that you are working towards ascertaining again in this happy family vein or environment. You're being asked to shift away from the focus on that unit, okay? Anything else here on the Ten of Cups, please, Spirit? Like love comes in many forms. Hmm. There's that Queen of Cups here at the bottom. Using your intuition. Hmm. Not, hmm. Not using your intuition. Not intuition. I don't want to say that. The Queen of Cups, so she's the freaky bitch. <laughs> uh, similar to the High Priestess here, but she's more social, okay? More Gemini emotion. Um, the Queen of Cups, though, can be eerily accurate with her intuition, like in reading in into other people. Um, it's not always welcome, though. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm getting here. N like, not, not using your intuition to read people, but not... You don't need to share that information with people, okay? Interesting. <laughs> Give it three weeks before you, you pull out that you're into tarot or astrology. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Six of Cups, though, came through here to clarify this. Mm, I am kind of drawn back to this family unit here more from the standpoint of you as a child. Nostalgia. This can symbolize a person from the past, too. So there could be, if something did fall apart, you're being asked to step away from um, living in this portion of imagination land. It's okay for memories to come and go, but if you're trying to stay in that place because it was better, however, you know, if you feel that way, uh, you're being asked to stop it. <laughs> it's okay to appreciate a memory, but don't let it stop your flow in the present, okay? So what you are being asked to focus on right now, Two of Cups. This is this is connection, essentially. So if something has fallen apart here, or even if something hasn't, maybe you just feel more disconnected from the divine yourself, or you've been putting less effort in recently to your own spiritual practice or prowess, meditating, journaling, becoming reflective. You're being asked to focus on that right now better connection to yourself maybe reaching out for support if you need it that's a beautiful looking hug there um having the courage to ask for connection mm. i think that i mean there's a lot of things that we <laughs> some people do but rarely do as humans one of them is really being comfortable with um Expressing our needs or wants. And in this situation, this feels like a need. There's a need to um, connect with others, to feel some oxytocin, right? Uh, there's that caduceus in the in the back, and the snakes, and then the lion up top. Mercury, hmm? a ruling planet, right? Communicating a need for connection is what you're being asked to focus on right now. Finding that bravery to do so. Anything else there on Two of Cups, please, Spirit? Hangman. <laughs> yeah. So it feels like there's a, a pause or a delay. <clears throat> the world here at the bottom. You will be able to cross 
into a whole whole new level here um, once you get this down, okay? The hangman is asking you to see this quality, that there is a need as, as someone who is so expressive. Um, we can say a lot by saying a lot, or we could say a lot by not saying a lot. Um, this feels like a situation where you, you are uncomfortable with expressing, I need a hug. I need to be held right now, right? I need, um, I need eight minutes from a friend, okay, for support. We really just, I don't know, ask, just ask for these things. We tend to act it out in um, unappealing ways, not just Gemini, all of us. That's that inner child that comes through and is trying to get what it needs by doing what it's learned to do to get what it needs. We as the adult, though, are relearning some of those behaviors, or a lot of them, depending on who we are, and getting clear, okay? This space is being opened up for you, or there is a pause on you moving forward with this connection until you see this, until you see how you are or are not requesting connection, okay? From yourself to others, etc. So where this leads, what it's good for, the emperor. Mm, it could be a divine counterpart for some of you, if this is love leading in that way. But this is um, this is that portion of like needing to learn how to love yourself before you can learn how to love somebody else. Getting clear about what your needs are and learning how to express those, that is a high form of um, love, self-love and emotional intelligence. So this allows you to connect with divine partners it allows you to take power and control in a very healthy way because you're tapping into that divine feminine side as well to allow the divine masculine here to rule in a healthy way. But coming into a state of presence, I love that. I love that for you. I love that for me too. Um, temperance, this is your advice at this time. Temperance, peace. <laughs> Peace, calm, balance. Um, it is alchemy. It's taking one thing and, and turning it into another. This is Sagittarius here. I feel like you are being requested to... Um, so Sagittarius is great about seeing the horizon, seeing off in the distance. Gemini, fantastic about seeing the details right in front of them. Both are needed at different times. Um, in this situation, I feel like you're being asked to see a little bit more of the long term. That's a part of this pause here with the hangman. <clears throat> you're being asked to see how the way that you experience connection, request connection, know that you need to ask for connection, how that is affecting your long haul, okay? You're being asked to ex explore that emotional space from a grounded place. Okay. Okay. Um, Oracle card here. Which deck do we want? Archetypes. I guess the first ones that broke the mold. Everybody's gotten an urban crow. Uh, for Gemini here, please, spirit. Ooh. The orphan. <laughs> okay. Um, totally. This is totally the energy that I was feeling here with the Six of Cups. So that inner child, something going on with your, the family or inner child. The orphan here is, and it could be literal orphan, um, but the orphan energy is essentially like always left in a state of lack or want. They're reaching that hand out um, for that flower, that snake that's around there. Something, the orphan was left alone the orphan was left without something that they needed as they were growing growing up as a child. So what you're being asked to do right now, that hangman, is to see to see that. What happened to you as a child? I, as an example, it was really weird. Um, I was on YouTube the other day and I saw uh, there were all these like 90s cartoons that were on there, full episodes. And so I started watching it. It was a Rugrats episode. It was fun, right? Um, and I, I don't remember exactly what it was right this second, but what I realized was something that Tommy, the character, had said just seemed super innocuous. 
as he said it, I was like, oh my God, that's been like, that's been a belief of mine my entire life. And I mean, it could have been true, could have not been true, but it was an opinion. And I realized in that moment that came from a freaking cartoon, right? <laughs> so just an example of how easy it is for those sorts of things to be impactful for us when we're children, let alone a, a big event, somewhere where you felt abandoned. You're being asked to see how that connects to the way that you connect or don't connect right now. It's a mission of your Mercury retrograde, okay? Okay. I love you, Gemini. Thank you guys for joining me here. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please have a beautiful day, week, month, year, however long it is until I see you again. I'm going to get cleaned up here and move into Taurus, okay? If you do have something that you are navigating on a more personal level, would like some help, check out my website. There's a link in the description. I'd be more than happy to help you, okay? All right. Take care, Gemini. I'll see you later. Hello, Taurus, my Taurus friends. After a quick break, thank you guys for joining me here. I'm going to cleanse the space real quick. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so a couple things that were coming through on that. Um... The sharper the knife and sharp as attack. Um, I feel like there is a request for precision right now. Like the, um, there's a tool for every job, right? <clears throat> Using the right tool, making sure, sure that that tool is in high efficiency. Your knives are sharpened, your scissors are sharpened. Um, that tack, being as sharp as a tack is, is um, more about like uh, wit or um, mental clarity. <laughs> I'm not sharp as a tack right now. Um, <clears throat> you guys are near the last of the signs here and uh, been going for several hours. So it's been fun. I've been having a good time actually here. So yeah, okay. Precision and the right tool. Let's take a look. Let's see what's going on here for Taurus. Um, there we go. Move some things around. Okay, Spirit, what do we have here for Taurus? I'm gonna pull a Mudra card here for you. Mudras are hand signs or symbols that direct specific energies within our hands for um, specific purposes, okay? All right, what's going on for what's going on for Taurus? What does Taurus need? Harmony. Okay, Taurus needs some harmony. Uh, perfectly centered. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so Matangi Mudra, dedicated to the deity of inner harmony and regal power. The eyes and ears, heart, stomach, liver, duodenum, pancreas, bladder, and kidneys all profit from your practicing this mudra. It gives equanimity and inner balance. Imagine a place where you find tranquility, harmony, and beauty. A place to recuperate, to gather energy. In front of you, there is a deep well. Its magical water brings harmony and peace, and you drink of it freely. Composed and centered, you are now able to cope with your daily tasks again. You are relaxed. What you say and do reflects your inner poise. I draw harmony and strength from the well of my inner being, and this determines what I do and what I leave undone. Uh, 44 is the number of this one too. So I do feel a greater um, support, okay? You are being supported or uh, guided right now by your spiritual team. So that one is uh, middle fingers together here with fingers clasped, okay? Harmony, harmony, harmony. <laughs> Oh my God, house bunny, it was a house bunny reference. Okay, Spirit, what do we have here for Taurus? <laughs> Anna Ferris, oh my gosh. What do we have here for Taurus, please, Spirit? <laughs> oh, can tell it's getting closer to my bedtime. Ooh, the wolf, the wolf. So um, this is interesting actually with the energy of harmony coming through, that last little bit of um, determining what I do and what I leave undone. So the wolf here is an energy of 
Um, <clears throat> it typically demands that you follow its rules, okay? Kind of that energy of like, you're under my, <laughs> under my roof, my rules, right? <laughs> um, the wolf is a great leader of family units in particular, packs. But there is a request to um, to kind of like let people be themselves too. It's okay if not everybody follows your demands or commands. And this also includes you. I feel like there are components of yourself here. And this may be where it's requiring precision rather than a scatter shot to pinpoint those portions of yourself that may be out of alignment with the greater, greater uh, goal, okay? Like, are you finding that there's something you want to pursue? New venture, hobby, job, relationship. And you're feeling in, like, in your heart, this is where I want to be, this is what I want to do, where I want to go. But something is coming up that creates um, an emotional state that you don't want to experience or that other people don't want to experience either. Maybe you're not aware of it. Maybe you are aware, but you're not aware why it's coming up. I'm feeling like there is a component of the family system inside of us that is feeling unheard. So you don't have to follow whatever this component of yourself is requesting that you do, but give it, give it just like every other voice, give it time to hear what it has to say. Thank it for the message. Thank you for this message. I know you're just trying to keep me safe or whatever. Um, I can take care of myself and this is where I want to go, okay? It just feels like there's a little bit of harmony that uh, could be helpful there, okay? Okay, so uh, what deck are we using here for Taurus, please, Spirit? Untamed Tarot, okay. What do we have for Taurus, please, Spirit? Messages for Taurus. King of Swords here, yeah. This, I feel like this is very wolf energy here too, okay? Like that that father archetype that is like, um, they are intelligent, they are loving, they may not show, they may not be the, like the warmest, fuzziest, emotional person, um, but they, they lead through knowledge and intellect, okay? May come across as colder, but a master of discernment. A general, <laughs> okay? Um, that energy inside of you, that's what I'm getting, is that King of Swords energy. There's a portion that is um, wanting you to see its truth, okay? So allow yourself to see what it has to say so that you can put it to rest, okay? Or listen to what it has to say. Yeah, maybe you do want to listen. All right, for Taurus here, please. This one, okay. Okay. Uh, four of Wands here at the bottom. So a major milestone, crossing a major threshold. These two, um, that's interesting. These two, like celebration success can be a part of this too. <clears throat> They're not facing each other and fighting, but um, as I turned this quickly, it looked kind of like they were in motion and doing that. What I get from this is like, like they're fighting on two different planes of existence here. You may be um, fighting a shadow. You may be fighting, um, yeah, a, a stain on time, something from the past. This could be the King of Swords energy that's coming through here too. If you take a, okay, yeah, if you take a moment to um, see what is or isn't in front of you, <laughs> that allows you to take a better tactical position, like the King of Swords is talking about too. And the blade and the tack, more precision, using the right tool. Swatting at the air because you think something is there is, is, um, is taking resources away from you, your time and energy. You're being asked to be a little bit more specific about your approach on something. Okay. Um, Four of Pentacles, Nine of Swords, the High Priestess, Ten of Cups, and the Fool, ooh, all right. So Four of Pentacles here to start. This does seem like, um, it could be work, 
but something that really provides you safety and security. Um, this could be, I feel like this is what might be swatting at shadows here. So an encouragement with the Four of Pentacles is to not cling too tightly to resources, to what does create safety. I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't honor it or respect it or, or hold it. It interrupts the flow, though. This would be leaning more into like a mindset of lack. We hang on to resources if we feel that there are not more resources to be gained. And that fulfills that prophecy, right? So there is an encouragement to adjust the way that you are approaching those things that allow you to feel safe and secure. To loosen your grip just a little bit, okay? Anything else there on the Four of Pentacles? Oh, just the component of freedom, okay. Um, allow yourself to be a little bit more free. And I'm not saying like, you know, spend your savings or go crazy on this, this or that, but make sure that you are allowing yourself to experience life, okay, as you're going along. Make sure that you're balanced in the way that you are preparing for the future, taking care of those things that keep you secure and safe and treating yourself too, okay? Freedom. All right. Um, your action or topic you're being asked to shift focus away from right now. There might be too much focus on this. Nine of Swords. Um, anxiety. Insomnia. A nightmare. Waking nightmare. Waking from a nightmare. There could be a, comp a component of mourning to this as well. Connecting that to the Four of Pentacles, there may have been some loss in the past, or it could be connected to your family, like a generational um, poverty curse, in quotations here, okay? Um, curses are only what we allow them to be. So what you're being asked to shift focus from, typically the, the Nine of Swords is, is this individual that's got their head in their hands, they're facing away from the swords, they're being attacked by these swords. This is why they can't sleep. In this deck in particular, this eagle is facing off with these swords. It's saying, nah, -uh, not today, Satan, okay? Um, you're being asked to turn away from those things that are causing you restlessness, to, to not sleep, excuse me, gosh. Mercury in retrograde here, and I am at the end, but I feel this is directly connected to the Four of Pentacles energy. That stress over having enough, whatever, whatever it is, money-wise, okay? Home, food, any, any of those things. Um, I get it's not a switch to, to just, well, I mean, oh, I don't know why I didn't think about just not thinking about that. Um, the request here is to take precise action through bravery. You're not actually like facing off with these, but you are, you're facing a fear. You don't need to taunt it, <laughs> but you can say, not today, not today, Satan, okay? No, thank you. Um, High Priestess here, though, this is what your focus is. This is um, the subconscious realm. What is hiding beneath the surface? This is a fertile area here as well. I feel like you guys are being directed to pay attention to that. What it is that you ruminate on is what is being grown here in this realm. This is the Divine Feminine. The, um, I'm missing the word shaded portions. Uh, the shadow, the shadow portions of Isis, Venus, the Divine Feminine. This is where all knowledge resides. This is where things incubate, okay? So this requires the Divine Masculine, the conscious mind, to impregnate this very fertile zone so that whatever is impregnated can grow. If the conscious, the divine uh, masculine thought is of lack, fear over safety, anxiety, insomnia, whatever the nightmare is, and that's what's being impregnated into this fertile realm, then that is what is being grown. She's just producing whatever is being given to her, okay? But she's also here like, hey, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> Like you said, these were grapes or you wanted grapes when we were planning this, but these are like butternut squash, okay? <laughs> this is a gourd, okay? <laughs> I don't think it's what you want, but I'll make it. This is what you gave me, okay? 
I feel like there's just uh, there's a an alert here or caution from spirit to adjust this a little bit. Precision again. Using the right tool for for the job, what you want to produce. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Thank you. Um, where this leads, what it's good for. You have ten of cups. So better connection to the divine. This is a happy family too. Maybe a part of your security here is your connection to your community, your family unit, friends, family. Um, actually, mm, I feel that might be for most of you. Actually, what this is, what this has to do with, because that knife, that knife energy too, like cutting something off, cutting some. You maybe feel, mm, Oh, interesting. Okay. You may be feeling cut off by a wolf. Maybe you decided not to follow what this wolf individual wanted you to do. And so you're feeling maybe there is some separation or space. Maybe it's perceived. I don't know. Maybe you're that individual too, the wolf, who wanted um, somebody to do something a certain way. Maybe you do have, um, I mean, there's some stubbornness in the Tauren shadow for sure. Um, don't take that personally if that is you, okay? People get to do what they want to do. And it, it doesn't mean anything about you, okay? But that may be how you feel secure, getting back to that, is feeling or knowing that other people are willing to take your advice or maybe come to you for advice. Um, that's totally okay, I feel like, to feel comfort or security in that. But if you're leaning into that to the degree where someone doesn't listen to you, and you may feel that your security is loosened because of that. The recommendation here is to bring things into a little bit more harmony. Okay. Giving that joint <laughs> middle finger here, right? <laughs> Through meditation. Um, but loosening your grip on that allows you better connection to your community. Feeling more stable in your community. Being better connected to the divine too. So you're feeling that support and that flow from outside of you when you allow yourself to. Yes. Okay, so your advice at this time, Taurus, is the fool. Having faith. There's a new journey starting here. There's a leap of faith that's required here. Trusting that... Um... How do you want to say that? Trusting that, it may, okay, it may appear to be falling to you, but it's actually flying. Maybe you've not flown before. You know what it feels to fly, to be free. Mm, interesting. If that's the case for you, I don't mean literally flying like in an airplane, but this freedom, having a force elevate your experience, something move you to where you want to be, what you want to experience, having faith that that's possible. And that knowing that maybe it feels like falling when you first try it. Because it is. You're releasing control. So there's a request here to release control. All right? Maybe you are that. Maybe you are being a bit controlling right now with the wolf. It's okay that your tribe have different opinions or ways of doing things from time to time. Okay? It doesn't take away from your value. All right. Um, we'll do an oracle card here to close this out for you, Taurus. Last piece of advice for Taurus. Mimicry. <laughs> Interesting. Mimicry. So, I feel like that's very specific for, for someone in particular. Kind of back to that wolf example, like I was saying. Um, somebody may be maybe mimicking you you may be mimicking somebody else but this is definitely in the vein of like flattery mimicry being the best highest form of flattery um this may be triggering events for you with your safety and security like um well that's that's how i am or that's what i bring to the game or, or what have you <clears throat> the advice here is to let let it be okay it's okay to let it be if somebody's mimicking you, 
or even if you're mimicking somebody else, it's not taking away from anything, truly. I mean, if you're full on imitating somebody, you're going to run into some snags at some point. But we all adopt energies, mannerisms, peccadilloes from those that we are around consistently, consume through media. It's a, it's a pretty normal human thing, okay? You're safe, okay? You're safe. All right. Taurus, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here. I'm going to get cleaned up and finish up here with Aries. Aries, Aries. So please have a beautiful day, week, month, year, however long it is until I see you guys again. If you are looking for some more specific advice or help on something, please check out the uh, my website there in the description of the video. I'd be more than happy to help you with a personal reading. Okay? All right. So, pen. What do I do with the pen? Finish strong here. <laughs> okay, Aries, we made it. Hello, my Aaron friend. Aries friend, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me cleanse the space here real quick. Interesting. Um, so I'm seeing this like turtle <laughs> and the shell, the bottom half of it is an eye. So it's like a half opened eye. Um, I feel like there's something that is a part of your protection system that is making it difficult for you to fully see something. Or that truth or vision is coming through slowly for your, ooh, for your protection. Okay. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yes. Okay. Yes. Totally. That makes sense. So things may be coming through a little bit at a time, slower than you want them to come through. The point of that is to keep you protected. Um, to keep your vision protected. Yes. Timing is important in this situation. And in order to bring into fruition what it is that you are working to bring in, timing must be followed. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get into your messages here, you guys. So we're going to pull a mudra card here first for Aries. <laughs> Level-headedness. Be wise. Yes. So um, Atmanjali mudra. A greeting to the inner self. I'm going to read this here for you. So the gesture of greeting activates brain activity and brings inner composure. This mudra opens the door to inner calm and thus to one's inner source of strength, healing, wisdom, and joy. Let your breathing become slow and deep. Year, year for year, our needs and desires change a little. See through your mind's eye your source of inner understanding as a shining apparition of light. Ask this figure whatever you wish to know. What is important to you at present and in the future? What can lighten your life? What is yours? And what will bring fulfillment? Tranquility and inner wisdom characterize my life. Okay. It's a pretty easy one. All right. I feel like this is, the intention of this is to help um, bring in a little bit of patience for you too. I do get this like hastiness or this desire to have something be a part of something, be through something. This is also actually standing out to me here on, on the card, one, two, three. There's a process to things. Okay, cool, all right. Um, let's go into your animal spirit messages for Aries, please. What messages do we have for Aries? Over three and a half hours here, you guys. <laughs> I was trying to keep these down. I was like, oh, I'll do 10 minutes a piece. These are usually around two hours um, long, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. It is what it is. What do we have for Aries, please, spirit? Messages for Aries. Black egg. Okay. 
so we're talking about um, your voice. This is the throat chakra. I'm feeling like... I do want to open the book on this, but I'm feeling like... I'm back to protection with the black on that. Protection over what you say. I'm getting kind of like, like the absence of something spoken is, is protection. Okay, I mean, there's something in the book though that... Let's see. Speaking from an authentic voice and the truth. Uh, okay, we start asking questions like, uh, what do I know to be true about myself? What is true about the world? When the energy, there we go. When the energy of the black egg is not yet accessed, we speak from an unsure place. We say things others want to hear, gossip or repeat stories to justify our subpar behavior. We might even try to convince ourselves that we have no inner truth at all. The energy of the black egg hovers and waits for us to reconnect. It is available at every moment in every situation. It's the epicenter of truth the birthplace of our voice. Okay, so um, that totally makes sense with the, the turtle there, like your, uh, the speed and, and your protection of things coming out. I feel like this is connected here to the authenticity of your voice. And that's not calling into question like, you know, are you real or fake? That's, that's not what I'm saying. Um, this is encouraging curiosity towards your own authenticity. Am I authentic? Okay. No shame or blame. No tea, no shade. It's a part of this. It is an opportunity to, um, to step more into whatever your authenticity is or to become more clear on what you already knew your authenticity was. But what's coming through with this message is that there is a need to examine that. There is a time factor on something because of what is being spoken or not being spoken that portion of your manifestation. Okay. Um, which tarot deck are we using here, please, Spirit? Wild Unknown, okay. Okay. What do we have here for Aries, please, Spirit? Message for Aries. The Empress here at the split. So healing. Nurturing is kind of coming through here. Um, that mother archetype, divine feminine. There may be, I feel like there is a bit too much energy working to be exerted right now. You're very passionate, fire, energy. You're good at getting shit done, right? And you're funny as shit and look good doing it, okay? For sure, absolutely. Um, there is a request here right now in Five of Cups. Just flipped over there too. Disappointment, need to turn away from disappointment. Um, I'm feeling like it's important to step into this role of uh, like our interior, uh, inner family. Oh my gosh, my brain is so fried right now. Family systems, okay? The inner family we have, mother, father, child. Um, there's a voice, and this is where I feel like this is not your authentic voice, that is bringing up something about being a disappointment, feeling disappointed. Like I'm getting that energy of like, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed, you know, which is one of the worst psychological fucks out there. <laughs> if you really wanna dig that seed in deep to a child, especially, tell them you're disappointed, okay? It's a gift that keeps on giving. So I feel like this might be attached to a situation, maybe there was something as a child that um, keeps rearing its ugly head right now, that is not your voice, but it's coming out as your voice. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So you're being asked to examine that, to readdress it, give it some love. Give it some love. Okay, what do we have here for Aries, please, Spirit? The Hierophant at the bottom. So, um, tradition, <clears throat> uh, keeping things in line is something that's coming out here. 
but like the towing the line, interesting. I feel like there's a fear or anxiety around messing up, like being being in this perfect little box. And whether that was something that was designed from a caregiver, you know, as a child picked up along the way, maybe it's a program that you gave yourself even, it's still not your authentic voice. There's an amount of spiritual ascension, expansion that comes with the Hierophant. But it requires that you are in the right lane, right? That kind of self-deprecatory thought or feeling is not allowing you this expansion, okay? And I feel like you're searching for this, though. You may even be searching for um, a spiritual leader, guide, teacher for help with that. There is something about your own sight, though, here. Hmm. To see, yeah, you're being asked to see that component of your authentic voice. Okay, <laughs> judgment, yep. Judgment, justice, son of cups, nine of swords, and then five of wands. All right, let's get into it. So judgment, yeah, now, now's the time for change. Times are changing and so are you. At least you're being requested to, okay? This is hearing the call to move, move somewhere different. Not like physically, I mean, could be physically, I guess. That's not what this card is about. But moving from a life of this ain't working to the life that you want to be in. Moving out of where there is death and decay. And if that's, you know, a part of your experience, what a voice saying that you're a disappointment could be imposter syndrome even too. Hmm? You're being asked to intentionally step away from that. And this could require taking stock of different components of yourself and addressing whether or not that needs to be there. Is this component of my personality adding to this component? Well, I'm going to consider changing that, okay? A personality is fabricated. <laughs> not saying that it's not real, but it is a, a, a structure that is developed based off of our thoughts, our words, our actions, consistency becomes a personality, our personal reality. So with the judgment card coming through, you're being asked to question your personality. Not allowing somebody else to question your personality, okay? That is never acceptable. We're not making, we're never making changes for other people because they want us to make changes, okay? Truly, whatever it is. It is needed that you want to make that change in order for that change to be made and in order for that change to stick. Okay. But you can change your personality. It is possible. Okay. It takes work, but it's possible. So, um, moving into the energy that you're being asked to kind of like turn away from table. There might be a hyper focus on this, but you're asked to focus on Son of Cups, and we'll get there here in a second. So justice. This is um, fairness, balance. It could be a legal process of some sort. You may be putting a lot of time and effort, energy into the outcome of something legally. I don't feel like that's for everybody. Um, or maybe you're considering striking balance with a legal, um, with Litigious action. Hmm. I'm not telling you what to do or not to do. But I do know that that is not always the solution to everything. And it can definitely end in uh, more pain <laughs> and heartache, even if you win something. So um, just throwing that out there, okay? The two cats here are looking back at the reader, the querent, and waiting for them to make a decision. Not a right or wrong decision, like I said, you know, if that is you in that situation, you get to decide what's right for you. But um, the decision component is what is being highlighted here. So I feel like mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're being asked to wait on making a decision of some sort. And for some of you recognizing that you're not, you're not the force to make a decision on balancing those scales, okay? Anything else here on justice? Let's 
Three of Cups. So this is um, success, celebration with those that you love. I don't always get this and don't like, not my favorite to bring up, but there could be, could have been a third party type situation for some of you. You may have been a third party in a situation. Um, but if you were, I'm getting this energy of like, like you're either finding out about someone who brought a third party into your situation or you were involved with someone and you didn't know that they were already in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um, There's, there's something coming through about exacting balance on that, okay? You get to make your decisions, like I said. And from a legal standpoint, it could be like maybe you're considering divorce of some sort. You're being asked to wait on a decision, okay? So let's move forward on this. Son of Cups, what you're being asked to focus on. This is romance. Um, this is also, you can be a player. Play by play girl, play non-binary human. Someone who is just looking to get that cup filled, that it's scratched, so to speak, okay? A little bit more in the hedonistic side of that kind of pleasure. <clears throat> I feel like um, if, if this was you, that you, you found yourself in um, a third party situation, you know, I don't feel like there's any need to get hard on yourself, blame or shame, like I said. But there's an encouragement to start looking at what it is that you truly want. What is it that you're what is it that you're pursuing? What is it that you're going for? Maybe you're finding yourself in these situations more than normal. I don't know what normal is, you know, to find to figure that out, but um, the point here you're being asked to focus on is realizing what it is, what is that liquid that you want in that cup? What is it that you want to grow? Kind of back to the judgment card there, too. Are the components of your personality, um, as they are right now, are they helping you towards what it is that you do want? Do you know what you want? If there's anything missing in, in any of that, um, this, I feel like, is why the, uh, the turtle, turtle sight, why there's a, a time frame to things. You're being asked to see these. There isn't an expectation on what needs to be adjusted or what doesn't need to be adjusted. What's being requested is that you are aware. Yes, these are a part of my personality and yes, I want those all to be there. Or I don't want this, I do want that, you know, whatever. And then um, that illumination, that vision, being aware of that, cognizant of that, changes your ability to speak what you speak, to speak from an authentic place. If you are finding yourself in situations where there is debauchery or you know cheating or, or whatever, if that seems to be a consistent theme in your life, um, no blame or shame, not blaming you for it. What I am brought back to here is the authenticity of your voice. Are you speaking what it is that you want? Are you coming from a place, and it doesn't have to just be a romantic relationship, but are you coming from a place of um, maybe even desperation? This feeling of, you know, I need to, I need to be um, flexible enough to change certain things so that I am accepted or allowed into certain things, you know what I'm saying? Um, as an example, well, as an example with that too, there are some people who prefer um, open relationships or polygamous, polygamous, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's not legal. Polyamorous type situations. Um, everybody gets to choose their flavor, right? But one thing that is very, very important is consent and uh, being clear about what you want. So knowing what it is that you want. Okay, let's keep moving forward there. Anything else on Son of Cups? My brain's like, I'm done. Father of Cups. Um, so yeah, back to back to like your feelings here. Or your voice. Um, the King of Cups, Father of Cups here is very clear about how they feel. 
they're not in control of their emotions, but they're the one managing the meeting. They're running the support group, okay? Everybody gets an opportunity to speak whatever they need emotion-wise, and the Father of Cups is the facilitator, okay? So again, back to this message, you're being asked to step into this role. Call a meeting, call them in. <laughs> All right, what the hell is everybody doing? How's everybody feeling? This allows you to take better stock of your situation, okay? To bring you closer towards your authentic, authentic voice. So where this leads or what it's good for, you have the Nine of Swords. This is anxiety, um, insomnia, fear. I feel like this helps you sift out or filter out components of fear that don't need to be there. Um, not saying that, you know, you don't know who you are. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, I would challenge that, uh, we don't ever fully learn who we are in this lifetime. Uh, and that's a part of the fun <laughs> because we are ever evolving. We're constantly also learning about ourselves. So mm, if that is you in that place, try to drop the ego. <laughs> okay. Um, it's okay. It's fun to learn new things about ourselves. But this is allowing you to eliminate unnecessary fear by getting closer to that understanding of at least maybe what direction you wanna head, what the flavor of the moment is. Stepping away from um, fear of loss, hmm. Or maybe something, a path was closed, some, a choice was taken away from you Maybe that is this relationship situation. You digging deeper into your own experience is allowing you to put some of these fears to rest. Anything else there on the Nine of Swords? <clears throat> New forward, okay. The lovers, yeah, I feel like, mm. It is some shady relationship here for some of you. Um, well, not could even be judgmental me saying that. Don't mean to place judgment on it. Humans be human in, okay? And that's that's what they're gonna do. So your advice right now, you have five of wands. Five of wands is competition. It is uh, a pissing match, dick measuring contest <laughs> with aggression, okay? <laughs> or there are no winners. <laughs> Oh, the encouragement here is to watch combativeness, okay, is, is to watch where you may be jaded, to watch where you may be um, getting triggered, okay? Maybe this is a situation that's happened to you in the past and it's being triggered in a current relationship. You're being asked to see it for what it is. Again, there's a lot of cards here about examining what is going on inside and your authentic expression. Is competition, I mean, sometimes competition is fun and healthy, but I'm, I'm getting more from a place of, um, don't waste that energy. You have a lot of that fiery Mars, passionate energy to give. But in this vein, it's not doing anything positive for anybody, okay? You get to make your decisions, right? As long as it is in, in line with your integrity and authenticity, you know, you do you, boo-boo. But I do know that the love, the world could use a little bit more love, including you, okay? All right, um, which oracle deck do we want to use here? We'll do the crows. <laughs> Gemini was the only one that got something different. Okay, so last piece of advice here for Aries. <laughs> and I'm going to go take a... 10 day sleep. <laughs> Community comes through here. Um, I do feel like it's important right now to um, lean on your community as needed. Support is something that comes through here. Maybe even um, mm, that nine of swords, that fear surrounding that. There may be a need to redefine what your community looks like. Maybe you've changed. Maybe you're going through this process with judgment. Things are changing. And you're noticing that it doesn't align with the values of your community anymore. It's okay to redraw the boundaries of what your community looks like. 
but I do feel like there's an encouragement here to um, to lean into your community right now too, especially if this is you where this relationship, whatever, okay? Don't make yourself an island. It's okay to receive love from sources that you know are authentic and safe, okay? All right, Aries. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. Um, please have a beautiful day, week, month, year. However long it is until I see you again. Um, please like, share, comment, subscribe if you guys resonated with this reading. And again, I have personal readings available if you want to check that out. So uh, love you. Okay, please take care of yourself. Be well.